World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill and strategy. Ladies and gentlemen, whoever you is with me as my special guest, welcome. Thank you, Paul. Well, the first thing is we're going to welcome all the fans around the world from Qatar, host nation, welcomes everybody. We'd like to say what a great match we have for you. And my special guest, Vivia, is here to help us. Now, you've just lost in the semi-finals of the women's division. And how did you find the tournament? Well, it's been fantastic so far. And, uh, um, of course, losing in the semi-final is not something that I, I would have liked. But, uh, but that's sport for us. Uh, looking forward to the six red championship starting tomorrow. And when does that start? And I also uh, look forward to some great snooker uh, from Habib and uh, Muhammad Shahab today. Two of the best um, players in the Masters category that we have here. And how do you see this match going? Two incredible players. Absolutely. Uh, in fact, I've, I've watched them play for many years in the, in the men's category and they've done exceptionally well for their countries. I find uh, Mohammed, the way he plays is incredible stamina. He's been here in the early hours of this morning and straight away at 10 o'clock, non-stop to be here for the final. And the way he plays, he breaks build. Fantastic, in the blink of an eye. And yesterday, we almost saw 147 from Mohammed. And what I'm explaining, eight reds, eight blacks, and he knew that 147 was on, but he missed it. Shab's easily one of the best players we have in the, in the amateur circuit now. I think uh, many years ago, he was uh, playing in the professional circuit as well. Good competition from uh, Habib, runner-up in the sixth red uh, last year at the IBSF World Championships in uh, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. How do you find um, playing snooker? How, how do you find playing this game? Well, I don't really think I can put it in words. If I if I could, um, it would be poetry. I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's something that drives me, um, and also I think many other players who are here from all over the world. And I've watched you play, tremendous player. It's always nice to speak to you. And like I said in the beginning, ladies and gentlemen, it's nice to have somebody with me in the commentary box. Sometimes I'm on my own, <laughs> minimum ten to fifteen hours per day. But uh, to have somebody here, it's fantastic, of your ability and knowledge. Many people might not realise I play pool, and I come in giving a pool player's point of view to the snooker world. And it's a bit different, because I go into the emotions of the players. Yes, I do get carried away sometimes, and that's how, again, I look at... takes me on that roller coaster ride. So what's your highest break? It's a 142. Wow. I've had a 97 okay. in my younger days. I had a, I was in the um, Ramadan tournament. That's a good shot from uh, Habib as we speak. I got third place. My highest break was 49 in six red. 
Okay, for my poke here. But right now, you are right, and that was a great shot. Oh, this beautiful shot from uh, Muhammad Shahab here. Not leaving Habib on with anything. And what do you feel about the setup for the tournament for the World Championships from the IPSF? How, how do you feel about the tables and the hotel and the way things are going? Oh, it's, it's been fantastic. Uh, I think uh, every time we come back to Doha for a championship, the hospitality, the conditions, everything is world class, without a doubt. And uh, this year has been no different. Uh, of course, the first time we're playing championship on uh, plus on tables. So it's a, a little different from what we normally play on, but what? And what about your country seeing you as one of the top players representing? Um, how do you find snooker in your country? Actually, uh, Paul, a lot of uh, a lot of players when we come for the world, uh, always say this very jokingly. It's like uh, India versus the rest of the world. <laughs> wow. uh, I'll be unlucky there on uh, on that safety shot. And how many hours in pool? I tend to tra uh, train seven to eight hours per day. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how often do you train in snooker? Every day. Oh. Uh, that's how it's supposed Same to be. So I can't, I can't do snooker training. After an hour, I find it mentally draining. Now we talk about. I often talk about different areas in snooker. Mm -hmm. Are you aware that you end up work, walking very far, up to about two miles around the table? in pacing back and forward yes. my watch was indicating how far i was walking around the table and you end up walking miles without realizing it and another thing how do women i've never asked this question how do you deal with the pressure um, i don't know how it works for the others but uh, i thrive on pressure and that's easily one of the uh, one of the things that draw me to to playing sport, wow! And uh, I, I love the adrenaline rush, uh, and also I think uh, it's about how we keep calm in those yes. crunch situations, and that I think that's what matters really. Um, we, we, I've spoken to um, Ralph Suke, and he has got this game plan from the pool world, who's, a, who's an icon world champion. I asked him a question, how do you stay so calm? He said, that's the game. And exactly, the game. exactly, and yes. And relaxed. That was a great safety. Now, I need to ask you a question. I apologize for my question here. When you're free nailed down, from a pool, player, pool player's point of view, I tend to go for everything out there and enjoy the moment. How do you do it? being free them down on the snooker table? I don't really think of it as a three nil down. Um, I, s I start like it's my first shot in the first frame that I'm playing and I'll come back with the, uh, all the energy that I have. Uh, that way you don't feel drained out. Exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah. Now the drained out, people don't realize you end up, the same with the pool world, we drink four to six liters of water per match. And in snooker, it's more or less the same. But um, how do you find the lights? We don't have big lights like this. Yes. We just have a small light. Does that play a part as well in, in the way you play? Because here's one for you. On a pool table, we don't have a heated cloth. Yes. But AC plays a part to the cloth. If it's turned off, it goes quicker. If it's turned on, it's like quicksand. Do you have the same problem in the snooker world, playing on a heated table to a non-heated table? I think uh, heated tables react much better. And here's another we, one. Here's we all, all, always look forward to um, 
standard uh, conditions which were used to so if we have a non heated table then um, you know the reaction of the balls are going to be very different from uh, you know how you'd, you'd like the ball to be rolling so it makes a big difference exactly I'll just give you a quiz later now we wear heated vests and heated uh, and, and arm sleeves in pool mm -hmm. do you wear heated vests for the snooker players because um, of the coat, or is it because mm -hmm. of the waistcoat tradition keeping you warm? Yeah, I, th I think the waistcoats keep us warm enough. So, but I did, I did notice uh, Muhammad Shahab wearing something like thermals inside. I'm not yes. sure if that's what that's he is. That's what I mean. Yeah. Here's another one. We wear a glove. Do you wear a glove? I personally don't, but I see a lot of other snooker players wearing it. Oh, I think it's each one to their own. Here's an interesting fact. Are you ready? The colours of the balls on the snooker table um, are the same colours as the pool balls. Can you identify them? So you've got the light yellow. Do you play pool, by the way? I, I do some, okay. yeah. What colour does the yellow represent on the pool table? One. Good. <laughs> I'm going to catch you. Let's see if I can catch you. Got one out of one. Colour for the green. What number is it for the pool table? Six. I passed four, I know. <laughs> I know. Six I beat you. Correct. Yes. Seven is brown. Ooh. Eight is uh, black. And uh, nine is the spotted uh, yellow ball. Hang on a second. Hang on, you are going way ahead. <laughs> so we got one ball is um, the yellow. The two is the blue. Three, is three is red, I but I think we go, we're going very far oh, yeah, away from. Right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you caught me out. <laughs> yeah. So it just goes to show we're in the same area, and what they've done, um, this company, Aston, who's the official sponsor with the pool tables, we have 4.2 inch pockets now, which is much tighter. Yes. To get that ball in. So it just goes to show, listening to. Your point of view, and my point of view, is fantastic. Yeah, look at the determination. How do you hide the motion? We show emotion sometimes. How do you guys stay out there for four hours, which we can't do in respect to our tournaments all over in that I, time scale. I don't know. I make a lot of funny faces when I play snooker, I'm told. Um, I don't really hide emotions. I used to be quite poker face before, but now um, I make all kinds of faces, and, and that's okay too, uh, as long as wow. there is no rule that says you have to be poker face to play snooker. One of the areas I focus on Good shot is again. cue action, accuracy, and focus. And why we miss. And it's down to consistency. It's okay well in practice going to the local tournament, but the reality is on the World Championship stage, players tend to miss. And it's down to their accuracy, or is it down to the conditions? It's, it's, it's a lot of things uh, rolled together. I think it's also the different conditions that were uh, players used to playing on back home and then when they come for the championship then it, the tables are much faster and the lights and yeah, also a, a pressure to perform uh, there's uh, many things roll into one pool I'm I think the players who have the similar conditions back home are the ones uh, can consistently perform and what age is did you start playing snooker? Uh, I'm 21, 22, I think. Okay. Yes. I started when I was about 15. As you can see, the game's running away now. Where do you... Right, this is how I look at the keyboard. I call it the keyboard, and I feel it's the blue. Will he need that keyboard for later on? Do you, uh, this, this is an interesting fact. 
do you have a beginning game, a middle game, and an end game in snooker? How do, how do you come and approach this first game? Oops, say that again, please. Okay. In pool, we work out how to make the wing ball. Yeah. And we go from there. So we've mastered where that one ball is going. In snooker, you have to make sure you have a safety shot from the break. Yes. But do you have a beginning game where you go all in attack? Mm -hmm. Or do you go in and wait for your opportunity? Or do you play safety? Which, which do you, I know it varies, but do you have a set plan? If it's not there, you. you I, th I think there's a basic formula, and, and I think pretty much all the players know that. Uh, you know, you you play it as it as it comes. You know, right. if if it if it calls for a safety shot, and if it's uh, uh, or sometimes you just play a shot to nothing, and you, you attempt a ball for a pop, and come down to play the ball colours, or maybe even still keep it safe. I was in Russia, and I played on a pyramid table. Have you ever played on a pyramid table? No, I haven't. Oh, frightening. The pocket, the ball hardly goes in the pocket. You have to force the ball. But yeah. Okay, let's put on the black. And where's your journey after this tournament, apart from the doubles? Where are you going after this tournament? Have you have another tournament? We have the, the national Indian National Championship back uh, is it a week after we wow. we're, we're home. So we have that to look forward to. And I think also the Asian Indoor Games Okay. Um, in February, maybe. And by the way, I love your food. Thank Not you. spicy, though. That's I uh, I think another opportunity for Muhammad Shahab to uh, catch up. So this is... 38 points down on the... on four reds. So we talked about that key ball. And it's waiting for Habibi to... to because once all these balls are clear, that, that blue is going to play a part, I feel. I don't know how you feel about that, Blue. And how do you find the pockets out there? Uh, much tighter pockets than we, we normally play on. Um, um, not very friendly. No, <laughs> not very friendly, but we, we get... Yeah. We're learning. We're learning as we, oh, as we go by. Yeah. Uh, all the time. Yes. And having you here is giving me confidence and experience. It's my pleasure, Paul, to be here. It's not easy doing the commentary on your own after 15 hours. I understand. <laughs> but, uh, and what cue do you play with? I play with a, a Mike Woldridge. Okay, and what mil tip do you play with? Uh, it was... 8 mil, 9 mil? Uh, no, it's, it was originally 9.25. Okay. And now I think with wear and tear it's about 8.8. <laughs> Last checked and it was about 8.8. Yeah, we play with uh, up to 12.4 mil tip. Excellent yes. shot. So, what would you do in this position? It's, I think from where Habib has the cue ball at the moment, he has no choice but to play a safety. Because there's no way he's going to play, uh, and he's going to pot a colour and make position for the red. So he's, yes, and that's a fantastic shot. Wow. With uh, Habib being ahead by 31 points at the moment, well, he couldn't have risked it trying to play a colour ball and uh, landing for a, for a red was really out of the question there. This foul and a rule, uh, foul and a miss rule. Um, apart from the white from disappearing. Now, if it hit, what ball did it hit last? If it hit the black, is, is that seven points for your opponent? Yes, it, it would be seven points for the opponent.
Sharp, but a little unlucky there after having contacted the red ball and uh, his cue ball going for an in-off. But he hasn't left uh, Habib on with anything, with an easy uh, red to take, so it's another safety shot coming up. Foul in the mistral. Can you explain that a little bit? How many are you allowed to have? And does it... Because I've seen it at one stage, the foul and a miss, but when the player's in front, they tend to... They can't have a foul and a miss. If you can explain that, because I haven't got a clue. Yeah, sure. Uh, so what happens is uh, when a player is snookered and uh, if they're unable to contact the object ball that they're supposed to be playing, be it a red or a colour ball, okay. um, and if they don't uh, contact the ball, so what happens is it's, it's a foul. It's a foul. And uh, the opponent has the option of um, asking for a respot. Yeah. Because, uh, and you can have as many respots uh, unless the player contacts the ball or the player goes out of the game. Okay. Um, so it, it, let's what say out of the game. Of the game. The yeah. Okay. Hard, okay. Yeah. Ahead, ahead by. Okay. Yeah. So let's say the, uh, if the game's on the yellow ball, uh, there's 27 points on the table with the yellow, uh, two points for the yellow, three points for the green, four points for the brown, and so on. Mm -hmm. So that's all together. The yellow onto the black. That's 27 points in all. But say. Um, if the player is um, trailing by, say, 28 points, okay. then he's already out of the game. So right. then there is no miss. So then right. that becomes a foul, and uh, the player has the option of playing from wherever the cue ball rests, okay. or asking the, the player who's missed to play again. Right. Yeah. So is it, how do you feel about that when, when that keeps happening, the foul and the miss? How do, you, how do you feel that you can't get out of it? Uh, well, that's that's the name of the game, Paul. That's a snooker. <laughs> that's yeah, snooker right. for you. I've seen people get frustrated. Uh, yes, it is frustrating, but... But well, that's how it is. And yeah, I like, I like I, your you, you have to just... Thing. Yeah. <laughs> I like your strategy. Did you have any big breaks in the tournament? Uh, not, not really, not really. But I had some uh, crucial clearances in, uh, the, in the color balls, and you know, last so few reds. And, and by the way, we were watching you in your game because we were trying to work out how we the outcome of you, you and by. Well, she played. She played well today, and uh, also I think. Um, I had some chances where I could have capitalized better. It could have been uh, two each, uh, oh. but I let her run away with it uh, with a f with a four zero. Um, but yeah, I, I did make some mistakes, and oh, she made the most of them. So oh, no complaints there. I'm just hoping to do better in the six red and just you know learn from learn there. from this. Yes, thank you. And who's your partner? Uh, no, it's a singles. Uh, it, it's a six red championship. It's I hope not. You get on the TV table. I hope so too. I, well, I'm not allowed to call it the TV table because it's the same table as everyone else. Yes. It's the arena. Yeah, and I know what you mean. So and we I have to. Uh, I apologise. Say TV yeah. table. It's, it's a fabulous setup here. It's no different to all the other tables. This red going to the middle. He's been amazing, Mohammed. We saw him yesterday. He was on the TV table yesterday. And when I left at 10 o'clock, he's still playing <laughs> in the night. So that was from 10 o'clock session to night time when I left. And he's still out there battling. And then when I walk in, he's on the 10 o'clock session. <laughs> in the morning, yeah? Yeah. Incredible. Um, I don't know what to say. Man's a legend. Can you play this game with a headache? If you have a headache, 
can you play this game to the best of your ability? Or does that affect you? And you just try and battle normal. A headache. A headache. Have you got a headache? No. Then no, you cannot. You cannot. It's the no. same as doing yeah. anything else, yeah. And silence. Yeah. You need silence out there. It's a so high it's concentration game. Yeah, definitely. Easily. Somebody's phone went off the other day, yesterday, and uh, brought me looked up. And then Unlucky on the yeah. on the safeties uh, in in the last two reds. Yeah, there's still a long way to go because it's a best of nine. And it's too early to say anything. Definitely. That's, yes, and that's no good for. How long do you think this game will last for? A few hours. <laughs> best of nine. It was a good comeback from uh, Manan Chandra of India in the semi-final against Muhammad Shaham. Um, Manan was last year's uh, runner-up. Wow. And he beat uh, last year's winner, Darren Morgan, from Wales in the quarter-final. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that, that was a good match between the, the boys and it was a treat to watch them both. First frame to Habib. They're both incredible players. And, uh, I'm very lucky. Um, it's just not being a commentator, it's meeting and greeting the players. Absolutely. I think I met you uh, a few years ago. Yes. Her, yes. Many years ago. And, uh, it's, it's great to see you again. But by the way, you're looking well and you're working hard at your game as well. Thank you. It's so important fitness and you see them both talk in there that's beautiful yes I think that's one of the most uh, beautiful things about uh, for me um, I don't know about the others but for me to come back every year oh. to play at the IBSF yeah. World Snooker Championships it's it's like a reunion of the family wow. uh, and, uh, you know the players the delegates the referees and uh, everybody it's just a fantastic feeling and of course to play and watch some great snooker as well. Yes. And healthy competition is, is what we are all uh, here for. And, and that's what they serve at the IBSF. And, and to be honest with you, you're not traveling to the venue yes. in a minibus and a shuttle. Yeah. You're here, you're in the hotel, you can chill out and you've got the time down the road. Yes. And you can chill out. And what do you think of Qatar? Have you, have you Gone to many places. Since I have uh, been to some places, and I, th I think it's beautiful. The people are the people are very friendly. Uh, the weather is kind this time of the year. Uh, it's just about everything that uh, anybody would want. Do you know what the souk is famous for? The souk. The souk. And at the front where The souk wakif. Yeah. Souk wakif. Yeah. Do you know why it's famous? Why is it famous? Um, no, I, I okay. for the food, I think. In Ramadan, uh -huh. they bring cows from Saudi Arabia across to come to Qatar and do trading, and that's what the souk's called. It's a trade center, okay. very famous. Okay. And that's a beautiful, in that beautiful shot, Harry played that to hold on. Yes. I call it hold on to the black, not hit it too hard. This cue action is amazing. What we do, um, if you were on this table, what we do, I'll show you exactly. Oh, this is our director for the cameras, camera director as he is. We will go into camera two, just getting it set up for you. And there it is. So we watch your cue action, we watch how you play and how you're feeling out there mm -hmm. and when you go home you can watch yourself and, and look at your mistakes and you can see the presentation i, I think this is a fantastic setup yeah um, even for not just for the players when they go back home but even for the audience wow. uh, to understand what's what's happening uh, in each shot For the viewers, um, being a volunteer 
a commentator is what I love. I love coming supporting Caterpillar Federation. I've done it now, coming up to this will be my 43 World Championships, so I fully enjoy it. Many congratulations, and I wish you many, many more balls. I've got too much to learn in this game. <laughs> it's too much. I'm still learning to this day. So why do I do it? It's the passion for the game, the love of the game. Staggering coming up to around about 300, 400 hours this month, 20 days. Wow. I've just done 120 for the world. Uh, sorry, for the Casa Open Pool. So yeah, it, 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 we, we all work. I don't work, but all these guys you know, gel together. I love it. And, uh, and this is what I love meeting people. I love meeting people. It's so important. No position there. I think he's uh, lost the weight. Maybe he just has a ball on um, near the black to stun it off one cushion. So will he be disappointed with that? I would be. Uh, no, because I, th I think he didn't have a ball on to, to port, so he chose to do the next best thing, which was uh, safety. Mm. He's looking at the plan. Yes, there is, there is, there is a, the yes, there is, there is a charge there. There it right, is. Yes. Is that makeable? Will he get it? Just missed it. And what do you think of all of your photographs? The photographs for all the players on the Caterpillar Federation. Oh, it's, they're beautiful. The they're beautiful. Very professional. And, and then I think this, um, the players are really, really uh, excited about seeing their pictures like this for the first time. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And what you've got to understand, it's a great belief, uh, it's hard to believe, but I will tell you. Boboda started off as a hobby many years ago, Boboda 1%. He's easily one of the now, best photographers, yes. He's a professional best photographer. Incredible. And we all started. Do you know when I started uh, doing commentary for Caterpillar Federation? Um, it was 12 years ago, and it was just me and my iPhone. Oh, okay. And then I had an iPad. And now there's a gentleman called Abdullah, who we call the Mr. Fantastic. Okay. Did, you, did that drift? Yeah, I, I think yesterday. There was definitely some... And Mr. Abdallah has put a studio together. And this is it. That's very kind of him. Yeah. Yes. We never had that. They, they, the Caterpillar Federation used to bring a company in, and that's it. But now, Abdallah has come on the scene, and he has took us. And live stream is for... Oh, he's been unlucky then. For Cancer TV, Outcast, BN Sports, and we are broadcasting to the viewers. And it's in English and in Arabic. So everybody's hearing us talk English. So you have a choice of Arabic or English. It's lovely. Now I did hear some news. We're back here again next year. I that's what a little Tweety bird <laughs> told me as well, but we'll have to wait and wait for the next two days and then... Yeah, you never know, something might happen. Have to stay tuned. Now, where we played the pool tournament, the Qatar Open, mm -hmm. was the greatest hotel in Qatar. We played in a palace. Wow. Oh, and that room was gigantic. So our TV, or should I say our table one, was the size of all of this room. Wow. Well, I, I did see some brilliant pictures of the event on social media and... It's gigantic. I think that was very well done. My commentary is better in the pool world than it is in the snooker. That's more your comfort zone because oh, you, definitely. You've, you've played pool all your life? Yeah, definitely. 
I just love doing this thing because sometimes I have uh, Michael Giorgio with me. Mm -hmm. I love having somebody with me, anybody with me, great with me because, uh, as they say, daft is a brush, but harmless. <laughs> but, uh, it's great to um, be here. For it's great show. to have company. Yeah. Otherwise, it's like talking to yourself. How did you know that? <laughs> I heard you, you, you've been listening to me. I can't talk to my camera crew. Because <laughs> he's got a headset, he can't hear me. <laughs> Sorry. But best of nine is very difficult. It really is. I think if we have a camera facing down the table from the D section, that'd be a good option as well. So we might look into that. I know they put cameras in the pocket, but yeah. we haven't got to that stage. We have a microphone underneath the table to hear the balls. Clonk, clonk. And that lady there in the crowd with, with the camera, amazing team. Amazing. What would it have meant to you, well, what does it mean to you being on the podium? Bronze medal for the semi-finals. Later on tonight. What does that mean to you? It means I have stepped down uh, one below the silver medal last year. But, uh, well, definitely there's uh, things I need to work on, like I said. Uh, the conditions are a bit different from what I play on back home. and. Um, well, and I, I have been playing all my matches uh, outside in the in the other room, snooker room, and salon. So uh, today was a little different from what I've been exactly. playing the league matches on. Um, but uh, like I said, it's just another learning experience, and um, I look forward to the sixth red and hope uh, I can do better. I know where you're coming from. I was repre I, I represent England in pool, and my wife said you are not going on table one. I said, why is that? She said, you don't win a game. <laughs> I said, yeah, you're right. I was 4 nil up against the champion of the world, two times champion of the world, ten times the world. Started waving to the crowd and lost 7-5. It, it does happen. I played perfect pool in the Castle Open. But yeah, it's different. But yeah, you're right. Back into the pack from the black. Has he got the angle? I'm not sure if he would do that or he'd just uh, maybe go for the single red next to the blue. And I think that's that's what he did because maybe okay. it's too early to go into the pack now. When he already has... Um, this one the one that he's positioning for. So he's going to take the blue after the red? Get it back on the spot? Is that a possibility? It definitely is. It's a good shot. Well, I think um, now he has no choice but to take the black and, and run with the back. In the yeah. Room, yeah. Into the pack. So how much pace have you got to hit this? Is it big pace? No, because like he already shot. has much angle on the black. Okay. So he d he doesn't really have to generate a lot of uh, power into the shot. Perfect. Uh, yeah, you're right. Such a beautiful shot that was. Which is your favourite shot on the sneaker table? Your favourite one? You know you're going to pot it. The long distance? Side. I'd like to think them all. <laughs> <laughs> my favourite is reverse side. My, my favourite hits that cushion and whew, it's gone. It's a bit much angle than he would have wanted on yeah. the black, but... Uh, so is he trying to take the red into the maybe he right corner again with the black? Or is he I think maybe he will run, try and run into the into the pink ball. 
Well spotted. Yeah. Well, we didn't because uh, the cue ball hit the the red before the pink. Um, so he's caught it half ball. Yes. Okay. But the way I looked at that shot, from my point of view, I would have played the reds in the middle. In the middle, yeah, yeah I way, middle. way too much angle on the on the okay. black to to control for the reds into the middle pocket. Okay, that's interesting. I'm learning so much with your presence here. Thank you. I really am. It's just <laughs> so. Where is he going with this red? Into the right well, he's corner? Shahab's already uh, pretty much sealed the frame with uh, four reds on the table. There's uh, five reds on the table, sorry. That's... Uh, oh, he went for the double. Oh, you safety. know, he played a safety. terrific uh, safety there. Habib's already out of the frame. When I say out of the frame, I hope you understand. Yes, that's uh, forty. That's 40 points on the red. If he takes it with the black, that's... Uh, uh, 40 and 27 on the colors, 67. that's 67, yeah, but he's still in the game, S 64, oh, yeah. so he, he needs just one red and a color maybe, or just one red, and Habib's already out of the game, so he doesn't want to make any mistakes at this point of time, and that's probably why he played what he did. I was asked to come up to something new in snooker, which mm -hmm. hasn't been mentioned, mm -hmm. okay, I came up with a point system. Every red is minus eight to your opponent. Okay. I think that's a very uh, novel way of looking at it. I mm. thought that was a good one. Yes. It comes in handy in the safety game at the end. Yeah. I have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Trap everything for the end, and you're in front. How do you feel when you're in front now? You're 64 points in front. How do you feel from your point of view if you're 64 in front? I feel good. You feel good? <laughs> I feel terrific. Well, not to, uh, you know, not play casually and um, lose it from there, but uh, yeah, it's, it's still 64 points on the scoreboard in your favour, so that's... And how do you feel when you're behind 64? Ah. Okay, I feel uh, challenged. <laughs> <laughs> like I it's like it your, is. I like your thinking. Yeah, absolutely. It is. Me, I'll be panicking. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Yes, it oh, is. Cha it's ball. very challenging. Whatever happens, I've got to get this ball. I'm going to go off. Oh no, I've missed the ball. Oh, my opponent's going to come back to the table. I've lost <laughs> the game. That's how I'll be thinking. Oh, I've got it. It's this a good thing it. that you play pool ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I do get nervous and I bite my nails and they know I'm nervous. When you play or when you yeah. watch, watch when other people? Okay. I bite my nails. When I was on TV, my wife was saying, why are you biting your nails? Because I was nervous. Great safety. Absolutely. I did have um, commentary with Wayne Griffiths, mm -hmm. his father, Terry Griffiths, yes. a legend, and he taught me one shot, what it's called, the shark shot. The shark? Yeah, the shark shot. Shark shot. Great wine. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, uh, simple safety from uh, Muhammad Shahab. Yeah. Not leaving uh, Habib on with, uh, with anything to start with. Your knowledge is unbelievable. So what's he tried there then? Did he try and pot it? No, not at all. I uh, just want to keep the cue ball safe, but I think he kind of... Frozen behind the yellow? Yes. We call it frozen. <laughs> there it is. We call it snooker. 
We call it Hook. <laughs> I call it Frozen. So this cube ball, how difficult is this getting out of, without leaving any other one yeah, that's up for ball on? So. That's, that's the, the challenging part. Um, and I think uh, well, there is a shot on to the to the corner pocket for yeah. a shot to take. So I have been told I speak too much sometimes. Right, Silence is better in the game. I have a new in the commentary booth asking me questions. I can't help myself to find out more knowledge about the game. I'm like a psychopedia. The book of knowledge. That's what I should call you. The, the book of knowledge. <laughs> Did he go for that then? He had to. It will curve out there. See it? Oh, you see the drift again on the... Yeah. It happened in the previous frame as well, when he tried to put in the... Yes, he did. In the green, yeah, in the yeah. green pocket. And You're right. Now, here's an interesting fact. Finger marks. How do you find finger marks? The way I see it is completely different. If that ball goes in them, it deviates. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, yes. Wow. Well, most of the players, you wouldn't find them uh, are leaving marks on the table. Okay. Um, well, well, some some do. So, which is why the referees, before they start the match, they brush. really brush right. the tables and make sure that they're on. And there's one question. I have got many, but uh, why is there kicks on the cue ball? Your theory. It could be a lot of things. It could be because of the chalk and also because of the moisture, yes. and because of the air conditioning. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. Small. Is that, that's where I'm coming from. I guess I haven't seen it. I've checked the cue ball and uh, there's no chalk on the cue. Oh, no chalk at all. This is an interesting shot. This red, to clinch this, this game. This red for, for the pink, I think. No, I cannot afford to make any mistakes at this point of time because uh, there's also another red behind the block line. Okay. So, uh, if he's going for a port on this red, he needs to make sure that he sinks it in. Even wow. if he doesn't make position on, on color ball, so is the pressure on on this red then? Absolutely. That's a uh, game ball for him in this frame. Would you drag the cue ball up and hit the red in over the pocket? Not Which red would you take? The, the one next to the pink, but uh, also having noticed that there's some serious drift happening in that pocket uh, when it's played at a very slow pace. So I call this the frame. Oh, this. Where is he going? I didn't understand that shot. Has well, he left it? No, not at all. Uh, it's blocked by the brown ball. Habib looks very confident. Maybe he has it on. Was game oh, ball wait for you? Wait a minute. Why yes. is that frame over? Yeah, because he left the ball on and uh, uh, 
Sharp just at this point of time just needed one red to win the frame because he's already up by ahead by f 64 points. Yeah. Yeah, and I I already explained the situation yeah. where he just that, yeah. that was game ball for him, and because uh, well he's pretty much given the red ball hanging in the pocket. It's, it's pointless to just just go on. Interesting point. I've seen players when they need four or five snookers and they still play them. At yeah, that could of be one uh, of many reasons. It's also probably because uh, they haven't warmed up enough into the match and they they want to, you know, get potting a couple of balls and, yeah. you know, that's one of the many reasons. Uh, it's, it's probably one of the things or it's also probably to put your opponent off uh, it's oh. as a very, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a very cheeky thing to do, but uh, you know it plays on somebody's mind when you when you drag it on, and then that's the one of the main game. reasons. I yes. Like <laughs> I tapped the table to say I did it. He he snookered me, and uh, I jumped the cue ball and put the ball. And <laughs> but that's I not allowed. <laughs> yes. All I did was oh, this is a ball. And you're right in the mind games. All I said was great shot. And it was like kept on looking at me every time. I only tapped the table and said, great shot, but you're right, the mind games, yes. I don't play that one. Oh, there's one for you. I run back and sit down in my chair. These the snooker players tend to see where the outcome of the board is when the player's playing the shot. Yeah. And that is crucial. Yes. Goes to the table knowing that this is a good chance, and they're all in the open. And by the way, the women's break 101. It was by Oni. Oni, yeah. yeah. And I commentated on that one. That was a good break, by the way. She didn't perform anywhere near her best today. Yes, I have. I have seen you uh, play better snooker, but. <laughs> What happens to the best of us? Uh, I, I think she had some close frames yeah. uh, in the final as well, but well, unlucky. Yeah, unlucky a bit. definitely, definitely. But that was a nice shot to hit the pink coming in. And look at all the reds in the <laughs> open. So. It, I think he, he got a little lucky there on the on the can and then uh, release on the pink, but. Well, I think that's one of the very. Um, crucial things about the snooker, you know, you need it. Not just snooker, I'm sure, also in pool. Oh, yeah, you need a good. 80% luck in pool. <laughs> so it's sold by my coach, Stephen Lynn. He said it's 80%. Now, this is interesting, getting the ball put back to the highest value of all colour. Because the uh, pink spot is not available. That's it. And uh, the referee here is checking if the, yeah, the black spot was on. Mm -hmm. So. And if the black wasn't available, it would go in behind. Yeah, behind the back, yeah. Oh no. So that's the wrong way. Okay there. Uh, so it's all happening. So where do you go here? I'll just play safe uh, off the red, behind the box line. What would you come up with to? It, uh, prevent the lucky snooker. In pool, we have cool shots. We have to call the pocket. Yeah. Would well, that help in snooker? No. Um, yeah. I mean, would that help? Yeah. Of course it would, but uh, well, it's, it's a long format, and I, th I don't yeah. think you know, pools, pool games are sh shorter oh, and quicker. And it's yeah. Quicker. <laughs> it's like sudden death. Oh, sorry. Um, I was in Sri Lanka in Ka and um, I went to this hotel in Scotland, in the ho uh, England hotel, and they had a snooker table in there. Ivory balls. Ivory balls. And he said, I'll put the lights on. So I'm rolling the weight around. It was like rolling an egg along. Shocking in the tip. And the queue never even had a ferrule. That's how old it was. And he said, I'll put the lights on. I said, we have to go. <laughs> he had gas lights. I do 
loves the UK. I know Britain already got passion for it. So much to learn. So the safety here yeah, behind the door. Behind the ball colours, yeah. Do you try so so hard sometimes and you end up missing so much? Does that affect your game? When you try so hard, you know you can pot it, but it's not going in. How do you deal with that one? With me, it's a nightmare. <laughs> I'm sure it's, the, it's, it? it's the same with everybody. But I think uh, that's that's why we all train in a yeah. particular way. Yeah. You know, you you practice and you don't have to try hard. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Not not when you're playing a match, you don't have to try. You're just doing something that comes uh, like right. second nature to you. Definitely. Do you have a coach? Yes, I have a coach back yeah, what's in. What's your name of the coach? The name of my coach yes. is uh, Pranit Ramchandani. Wow. And I play the side right way. Oh. I must say thanks to Pranit and also to Steve Feeney. Wow. I have a coach from Saudi Arabia. Wow. That's all. That's all. Yeah. I have a title. Europe's most successful pool player. First European pool player to win over 200 titles. Wow, that's fantastic. Take Paul. care. Wow. <laughs> 17 finals in one year. Take care. <laughs> Five in a row. Very impressive. Thank you. Nobody's ever done that. 17 finals in a row. Well, 17 finals in a year. But in a year, a yeah. But well, still, that's, that's not something a lot of people can boast. Well, it's not, I just keep that quiet. I don't <laughs> tell everybody. Just on TV. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And you're representing your country. I represent England in nine ball as well. So it's good to represent your country. Yes. It's lovely. I saw the plan. I didn't want to say it. I just saw it after he played it. Yeah, but... Uh, but the value, not there. No, no colour. Probably has to play a safety of the brown. So the brown's nominated. Beautiful shot again. To master that white, to get it on that cushion, is experience and hours of practice. But with the pink out of commission, would they be trying to get the... That's the question I need to ask you. Do you prefer trying to get all the colours back on their spots for the end game, or do you just break build and leave them there? Not knowing that I do like them back on the spot. Oh. Uh, everybody would, okay. I, I think. Um, but yeah, sometimes uh, you know they're scattered all over the place and yeah. And so do you play to get them back on the spot? That's what I mean. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Okay. That's the plan. But uh, sometimes it doesn't go according to plan. And, and he lost the white. So as we uh, watch the uh, unlucky, unlucky the again. Table. Unlucky there again. I'm forced error. Yes. Okay. That's the shot I got. Yeah. So that tactical shot, bringing the red out, bringing the tried to bring the black into play as well difficult to work that one out. This shot to nothing, this is a good area for you to explain. A oh. shot to nothing? Yeah, <laughs> go for the red and then you're not... Not oh. again, not yes. again. Oh, that was a fantastic safety by Habib and I think that's, that's probably the um, third uh, enough he has, uh, you know, given away in this frame. Ah. 
So he's giving away points. Yes. Cannot do that. So a short to nothing ball, what you yes. were asking okay. me, is uh, like you play uh, a red ball. Okay. Um, and, and not really uh, play for a particular color on on the top of the table. Okay. Uh, but you, you you play the red in such a way that you, you avoid uh, running into the other red balls or the colors and uh, probably land behind the um, what oh colors? Colors. Oh what okay. colors? Yeah. It's and then you it's step on It's pretty something. much like yeah. It's just you, a you, you, yeah. You play a pot. It's, it's you're, you're attempting a pot, but well, it's really to nothing. Okay. Yeah. Not to anything in particular, if you know what I mean. Because you miss and you only leave yeah, that you're one. Yeah. Yes. You so you just it's pretty much like a a, a safety shot, uh, but you also want to attempt a, a, a red, and try and find the gaps. Yes. Mind the gap, please. <laughs> Not mine. I like that one. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that one. So why do they keep potting? Are they playing <laughs> billiards? <laughs> Is this billiards turned into snooker? <laughs> well, they don't. This is serious. I've never seen this before. I've never seen the white coins. So are they playing a disappearing act with the white? Who yeah. can make the white go in the pocket? The, the most, the maximum number of times, yeah. yeah. Um, Never seen that before. No, the, the men's billiards is going on another table <laughs> at the moment, but uh, no, it looks like we have competition here from um, Habib and Shahab as well. Exactly. So, this red will take him to the black and the break building will go. And look at the support. He's got his fans here as well. Both players. Do you play billiards? Do you play billiards? Uh, no, I don't, I don't play billiards. But I, I like watching uh, some. <laughs> I did the World Championships. Uh, don't ask me how I got on doing the commentary. Did, did you have company? I was all on my own. <laughs> I needed you there. As you can see, he's going in off. <laughs> so now it's great. I'm looking forward to watching you play oh. six reds. Sorry. I'm looking forward to watching you play yes, six yes. reds. I think your pool knowledge will help you. Yeah, the pink is on. Let's have a look at camera two. There it is. We've got a great camera set up. Nicely done. Just having the cue ball cleaned. This is the first time I think in the match. And the referees are fantastic. Could you referee again? Could you be a referee? Yes, I, I could, but I think you need a certificate to. Uh, I couldn't do it. I find we, it do, we do some local matches back home. What, we, we, like you volunteer. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, we do that as well, but. I could never, I will never referee. No way. I can concentrate that long. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a beautiful opportunity to learn so much. Uh, really? Yes. I will ask, I will ask if I can be a referee. I'll just do the local events, I'll work my way up. Yeah. So we watch now the control of the white as well. So the main parts I see in snooker players as well as pool players, and by the way, snooker players are really coming over to the pool world now. Accuracy, consistency, and cue action. All the keys you need for this game. And the other ones are mental ability. Yes. And if you've got all them, you can be crowned champion of the world.
So where do you find it difficult with those two reds then in that red on the cushion behind the black there? The two reds together on the red. On the uh, top cushion. Then? Yeah, I think uh, somewhere down the line Habib's going to try and um, create an angle on the black to uh, put the black and uh, stun off the okay. two reds and, and release them, but not now. But he already has uh, enough reds open. Uh, so because the reds are being open, you don't need to develop more you reds? Don't, you, don't need, you don't need to, because what he has uh, six reds out in the open already, um, and that's, that's maybe enough to uh, even seal the frame. Uh, so we'll just have to wait and see what he... Even though he's pushed the red over by the middle, it's very difficult, but he's starting to feel comfortable again. And the points are starting to run away. So there's yellow to come down for the red near the pink. Yes. That's perfect. Very well played there. Taking the black? Would you take the black here? I, I would take the pink at, the, at this point of time. Okay. Play a stop ball on the red. But he's choosing to... Into the pink and come across and the black's the right one. It's a bit difficult. I don't know which way he's going. Players tend to... I tend to call it and then they change their mind and go somewhere else. <laughs> This is an area I can talk to you about. This is what happens to us in our world. We tend to use the cue as a marker. Mm -hmm. We tend to use our hands to indicate where we want to be with the cue. Yes. Do you do the same? Yes, I, I do the same thing. And yeah. Why is that? Why, 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 why do you do that? Is it to tell yourself you're going there, like I do? Yeah. I, I mark it there and there. Yes, yes, pretty much. To, to uh, kind of um, land in an area. Uh, you know, you have like a small window where you can, yeah. you know, uh, maneuver the cue ball into. Um, so it's it's easier to position that way. You call it the window. I call it the pizza slice. The what? Pizza slice. Pizza slice. Yeah, pretty much. Yes. And I try and get balls online. Yeah. Kindly playing well. All of a sudden, do you, when you miss, there's like another question. When you miss. And then you feel, then you get an opportunity, and you put one ball. Does that change your way of thinking? Absolutely, yes. And one more question. The easy ones are the hardest ones to pop. How do you find the easy ones? It's actually, I, f I find the... It's called the hanging ball, yeah? The one that's like closest to the pocket. Ah. That's the, those are the ones. It's easy to pot, but to position from there ah. is very tricky. Right. And you need to be extra careful on those, you know, not just not take them too casually. It's just yeah. because it's just by the pocket. find the middle pockets very difficult? No. No. Okay. When you come over next year, we have time. Yes. We have to have a game of snooker. Yes. I play some pool as well. Ah. I look forward to playing wow. some Chinese pool. Ah. I'm just flying over to China. I know. I will be the commentator for the uh, Grand Hawaii. Take care. That's in March. So I'm looking forward to that. But that's where I, I come think from. Chinese pool is uh, easier for snooker players to oh, uh, just to transition into. You yeah. know what I mean? It's yeah. um, I come from an English eight ball background. Yeah. Um, it's to play a professional game, so yeah. Oh, great what shot. shot. Great shot. What a shot. shot. there. 
taking it too well. Are you feeling the comeback here? Yes. Yes, absolutely. And by the way, he's a lovely person. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Both of us. I know we both stay biased, but uh, I'm very lonely to... They're like holiday friends. This is my favourite shot. Are you ready? Side on the cube, hitting the cue ball 20 past. 20 past three. Side, run the rail. And in it goes. There it is. No, I think he's he's All playing a charge. Up. Yeah, he's going for plunk, yeah. With safety in mind? Yes. Why doesn't he go behind the red and kick it in? Is it too difficult? Yeah. Do you know why he looked at it, you know? No. You know? I He's looking at safety? Yes. Just playing it off one cushion and just uh, to touch the red balls there and leave it there. Yes. So how is that an advantage there? Uh, he, he doesn't leave his opponent on with uh, a, a ball to port. Okay. But yes, he can play safe. And the tap on the table there from his opponent. Great sportsmanship. Yes. I think so, yes. What a shot. I think there's very uh, little room for flukes at this at this stage. We are talking about the, wow. the, the <laughs> world masters. come out nice. Yes. How attacking is that? So he has to move that red because he's got nothing to protect to protect that uh, red in the open. Yep. He has to close he's the red. He's playing a safety off the cushion. But where's the enough? There is no enough, just beautiful. Now, do you take the red on? No, uh, another safety shot, I think, by Habib okay. here. But why, why don't we take the red on here? Um, because the difference is only about 16 points at this point of time. 34 for Sharp and uh, one. Well, that is a shot to nothing. Hooray, we found one. Yes. <laughs> You found it. <laughs> I've been waiting all day for that. Yes, that's a shot to uh, nothing because he, he, he tried it, but uh, not positioning for anything in particular, if you know what I mean. I am learning so much in this game. I really am. So, that's the hit. It's a beautiful one. Now he seems disappointed. Why is he disappointed? Is it because that shot to nothing's on again? Uh, he would have he would have liked to keep the two reds together uh, and probably not leave him on with anything to play. Oh, wow. Now this red. Yeah, somebody's with the phone in the crowd. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what I love about the referee and every players. They're, they're spot on. Yes. When uh, Joshua Fayle uh, was playing, um, people were taking cameras and <laughs> it's like he's playing a shot. Can't have that on the table. But it hasn't affected his game. Nice. Short two. Nothing. Absolutely. Oh, what did you call it in before? What did you say it was? You said it was something and it was a good one. I had the great white. You had 
I forgot what it was. Can you remember what you come out with? <laughs> I forgot what it was now. You said something and it was the great idea for that. Now. This red. Knocked on the door. Yeah, I would have uh, had things going in Habib's way if he had bought it and because he's already landed on the pink Yeah. for the next ride, but having missed this, well, it's another uh, chance for Shahab to come back into play. Yeah, there's plenty of points on the table. Well, well, there's still more safety, safety play to happen the, the next few sh visits. Perfect. It's beautiful safety. That was a beautiful shot. Has to hit it. Oh, what a shot. Are we witnessing? A master class today. Absolutely. We're Absolutely. like in a classroom. It's not, it's not just about the brick building that uh, you know you, you expect of champions. You you expect them to play an all-round game yes. of uh, you know terrific safety play is is one of them because uh, only if you have uh, the best of safety plays can you create an opportunity uh, mm -hmm. to stop that break off. So. The best potter I've seen on table one was in the men's division from Poland, watching the black there, Thomas, mm -hmm. was incredible. He was, he would take, uh, imagine that red where it is on the left and the cue ball was the yellow, he would pop that and screw back to the left of the table. He was, he was doing that constantly. He was a true potting machine, but he didn't have the all-round game. And you're right, and that's what you have to have yes. for this game. Yes. Mohammed will be disappointed to see this red disappear. Very well controlled. Wow. Would you go for the pink or take the green and come around? The, the, pink, pink? the pink's a yeah, better shot to go. Shot, yeah. So what was he looking at the angle to take the green past the black? Maybe he was also checking if the black was on in the first place. Oh, okay. But so containing safety again. Containing safety, yes. So why is that? Why? Uh, why do he has the pink, pink on uh, for the next red and only 20 points? Uh, Still a long way to go, it's just one all in a best of nine, so I think he can risk the taking the pink ball. Fair comment. Safety of mine. So it's the chess game on the snooker table as I call it. Do you play chess? Yes. Oh so I should have brought my chess board home, we could be playing.
They had the World Championships here. In, in Yeah. Oops. I didn't get time to go and see because of the pool was on. Great show. Now, this is a tempter. Do you fancy going for this? Red in the corner? Hold, hold for the colour? I think so. Is he looking at the safety? I hope not, because the, the white ball's pretty much in the middle of the table, and I think he can afford to take a chance. Oh, no, that was a bad move. The dreaded double kiss. Yes. Does he fancy taking this off? This could be a frame winner. I believe that this red. Look at the deep breath. And will fatigue play a part in his game? Open playing. For sure, because uh, the boys have been playing long matches uh, yeah. since morning. Yeah. Yeah. Ten o'clock. Yes. Been horrendous for them. Plays a big part in uh, in concentration and yeah, definitely. Yeah. How do you concentrate for hours on end? Yeah. I don't know how you do it. It's not easy. Is it willpower? Absolutely, willpower. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't do that. Like I said, I, I could have a game of snooker for an hour, and after that, because it's, it's a finished. lot. It's a lot to focus on, especially when you're playing uh, two matches, two long matches. Yeah. Or sometimes even three. I played Ali and uh, I lost to Ali in snooker and I did really well. Now, this frame has slipped away. Yes. So how do players regroup in the snooker world when you when you're training down and you're feeling exhausted? How do you find the energy to keep going? Well, it's, it's something that we train through the year for. Yeah. Um, the big matches is what we look forward to, really. So, well, even if your body's complaining. You know, you've, you've already played the best of nine and best of eleven in the morning, and then, uh, especially for the men, I'm sure this is yeah. this is what they they're fighting for. Is there a ladies' masters? Um, no, there no, there isn't. Not in the IBSF. No. And one thing I do not understand in the women's division: best of three. How do you cope with best of three? <laughs> We play one frame shootout, but how do you do that? You come all this way, you're playing a round robin, and it's best of three. Yes. How do you cope with that? Tell me how you cope. Oh, I don't understand how you cope with that. Uh, well, I don't. I don't really know uh, if I. Sh wow, that was close. Um, best of three in the league stages is still okay. Yeah. In the league stages for a 15 red, but for a 6 red, I'm sure it's going to be a best of five. Okay. Um, but in the tournament, this. this, this in the 15 red, uh, yeah. best okay. Of three. How do you deal with that? It's a lot of pressure. Yeah. Especially the, the close frames. It's a great shot uh, from Shah. Great shot. Oh. So 25 on the table. And uh, 25 is uh, the difference. Yeah. Uh, Habib's ahead We're by. Spotted black. Yes, it is. It will be a double black. Mm -hmm. It could be a double black. Um, oh, that's what you call it. Oh yeah. Double black.
goes green to the corner to come back around with the brown. He has to be careful though. what I'm saying. You have to be careful. I caught it. Did I call it? Well, there was a, a swing uh, on the cue ball, if you noticed. The, uh, the arc, they call it. The arc, yes. The arc, yes. So how important was that? Going in with seven points. Where's the it's, like a, uh, it's like another lifeline for yeah. Shahab to come back into the game. So all he's got to do is run the table. In respects, 25, yeah. 43. He's back in the game. 68. He's back in the game with a with a seven away. Yeah. Interesting. Yes. The way he put that side on it, it was a necessary side, wasn't it? How did you find the cushions? Did they react different? Were they bouncing different? Yeah. Has he tried any more pockets? Uh, I'm sure he tried it in just the, just the one pocket. <laughs> The best shot I seen. But because he he needs them all, yeah, I think right. he was more focused on getting the position on the brown as well. I saw one shot, um, which I was amazed with. He tried three pockets. <laughs> <laughs> went in the jaws of the yellow pot. Oh, I got um, a quick one for you, Jasmine, the referee. Mm -hmm heard my commentary and she helped me because she called it the yellow pocket and the green pocket. Yes. Instead of the corner pocket. Yes. She said, you want to call it the yellow pocket and then the green pocket. So, anyway. so he's gone in the yellow pocket, it's come down, he's gone into the corner on the left hand side and then it went into the right. So it went, oi, 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 oi. it was like a big ball machine. Trying to bring it down to pink? The cue ball? Yes. Yeah. The cue ball? Yeah. Possible. I think um, uh, he could do that. Or also. <sighs> yeah. And now in the blue. Yeah. yeah. Just uh, keep the green safe as well. He knows that this shot has to go in with the brown to formality. But he's gone for safe. But wait a minute. Has he left it? He's left it. Look at the monitor. So it's on for a pot, yes. That's the shot that you were talking about just yeah. now. And then it came down to the black one, then went across to the other one. That was unbelievable. Now, how would you be feeling on the screen? You know you got to pot it. The brain's a formality. Do you go all in on the pot? Yes. Yes, and uh, that again is a sh Wow. That was a simple shot. <laughs> um, 
Well, I think pleasure gets to the best of us. Well, he, he didn't have to do much or with the white ball because there was already angle on the green. Well, I think we need to cut the boys some slack because well, they have been playing for many hours now oh, already. 100%. 10 o'clock. They were playing in the early hours of the morning. 100%. We're living in a world of fatigue. I could play like this. Our tournament's all ended, but we're at home. Yeah. Put the trophy on the mantelpiece, thank yes. you very much. <laughs> Sugar, he's going to ask for a respot there. Probably wait for a, an easier um, chance on the green. Okay. And uh, hoping that even if uh, Habib contacts the green ball, gets out of the snooker, um, he would have a better chance of uh, finishing up. I have a question for you. I was going to ask um, Wayne Griffiths this one as we watch the rain. Okay. Take this blank pool game. This is just surmising. Mm -hmm. Your opponents are fifty, say fifty-six points. You need the black to win. Oh, I've got to get this right. <laughs> Hang on a second. If you do a foul on the black, you can still win on the black. No, you cannot. Why is it loss of frame? the black if you do a foul. What a shot. That's a great shot there. The trick here is uh, Paul to make position on the blue for the pink ah. in this frame. Because I but in, in the black ball game, why is it foul on the black? It's lots of frame if it's a black ball game. So uh, you're on a black ball game, yes. I apologise. You're on a black ball game, but there's enough points in it, you can still win it. If you did a foul, it's lots of free. Am I right? Or maybe not. <laughs> or ask, or ask. Just try to. Because I saw one black ball game. But yeah, there was still seven points on the table. Because there was a little black ball game. What a shot. But where's the. Oh. Unbelievable. That's. That's the kind of position you need to clear. That's the kind of position you need on the blue yeah. to finish up. But can he do it? Of course he can. <laughs> can he do it? This is massive. The pain that was, a, that, that was a little stroke of luck there. Yeah. Or almost going in off and then, you know, coming out of the pocket just enough to give you a position. And that's we call this the pain game. Yes. This is pain. Yeah. Oh, very painful if this goes in. Your opponents are the black. We talked about a black ball game. A perfect example. Now, if he misses the black, is that loss of frame? Of course, because at this point of time, there's uh, the difference is only four points. He's done it. Fantastic. But where's the white? Where's the white? Lucky with the with the jaws, yeah. uh, in, in, you know, um, on the black and also on the on the brown. Yeah. So, because of that black being the black ball game. Yes. Should we take if a the difference is, uh, s is seven or more, then you know because it's o it's already finished on uh, the black. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it, the, no, you know. Sorry. Yeah. We're going to take a commercial break. Absolutely, and thank you very much for having me, no, Paul. Don't yes, go. <laughs> please don't go. <laughs> I'm chaining you to the uh, seat. <laughs> it was an honour. Thank you. Oh, it's my, my pleasure. It's, it's been but, it's um, wonderful to sit here and watch uh, uh, this uh, in, in in your studio setup. And uh, thank you for having me over.
you know, more than welcome. As, as you see, I haven't got a studio door. It's always open. We took it off the hinges. More than welcome to come back anytime. But in the meantime, I love I so love much. the studio setup. Anyways, it's it's beautiful. What do you think of our cinema screen before we go? But what do you think of our cinema? Mm -hmm. If you can imagine a cinema, yeah, we're sitting in the front row. We've never had such a, the biggest telly ever. So you could turn the uh, snooker table upside on the side, and that's our screen. Yes, I think it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> Before we go, is there anything you like to say to the fans of around the world? Uh, p p watch uh, uh, the championships live on. Uh, uh, on your yeah. Keep it, yes. Keep it on uh, YouTube. Yes, and enjoy uh, Paul's that's commentary. <laughs> Solo commentary. Uh, <laughs> no, but that's, that's some great snooker uh, to watch. Uh, also coming up is the um, men's team events um, and also the women's uh, six reds and the men's uh, 150 up billiards. Um, so and before you go, I have to stay biased, but I hope you win the six reds. Oh, thank you very much, Paul. Uh, I look forward to it as well. Yes, that's that's my forte, really. I'm, if I'm not, can I care if for the final? If you're not in the final, <laughs> that's so me. <mean. laughs> can you come and join me in the commentary uh, booth? I, I can I cannot say I'd love to. Um, no, because you're going to be picking up. The <laughs> I'd, I'd love to be there playing, uh, but uh, yeah, sure. I, I now that you don't have no door to the studio, you know, I, I'll be walking in and out as many times as uh, as I can. Ladies and gentlemen, my special guest. Goodbye. Say my name for me, Paul. <laughs> Say it. <laughs> it's perfect. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Uh, thank you. Welcome back to Qatar! In a world where precision meets strategy and every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. Get ready for a snooker spectacle. The World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill, and strategy. World Championships, Qatar 2023, where champions are made and legends are born. Precision meets strategy, and every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. Get ready for a snooker spectacle. The World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill, and strategy. World Championships, Qatar 2023, where champions are made and legends are born. Welcome back to Qatar! In a world where precision meets strategy, and every shot is a...
welcome, ladies and gentlemen. What a cracker of a match we have for you in the World Masters. My special guest, V, who lost in the semi finals, has given me some knowledge, more knowledge in this game. And I'm fairly enjoying this match. And congratulations to both players to reach the final. They're both winners to be here. It's been an epic battle for both of them. Playing in the early hours from last night to 10 o'clock to right now. Unbelievable stamina to be into the final. The presentation for the World Championships ladies and the World Masters is after this match. So it's been an epic battle for everybody at the Federation. Since the 4th of this month of November to the 25th, non-stop action for all the worldwide fans. Fatigue is playing a part now. It's going to be down to willpower who gets over the line. There's so much to learn in snooker. get the safety and now to get this safe is too difficult so this red not too sure which way he's going here. Yeah, that was the right shot because of the safety. But that unforced kiss into the red. So all of a sudden, Mohammed comes to the table with everything in the open. Will he be able to get going again and take this frame? We saw an incredible comeback on the black, but right now, Mohammed is starting to get going again. I don't know how both of these players have played all day with incredible stamina. I don't know how they did it. And they've still got another two or three hours to go.
So this yellow, I start, I come back in this frame, still a few reds tied up, but he's going to go for the blue instead. Very important shot this. Played that perfect. Now, for this red to the corner. And well done to the referee. Incredible. Been out there since 10 o'clock this morning. the score. Four points in it. Fatigue is playing the part. Both players are trying so hard out there. It's not easy. Just caught the fine edge. A round of applause, but that was close. And this final is starting to warm up for the worldwide fans.
so you can see the safety shot trying to come up behind the bulk area and that's a great shot but he's just knocked out that red and that could be the red Muhammad is waiting for I find sometimes just knocking out that red and not getting that safety could be the opportunity for the opponent but all of a sudden things are not going his way just three points in it and I don't see any key balls apart from these reds in the open that's a great shot it's got to travel though Saved by the pink. It's a very clever shot. Both players are trying so hard out there. They've been here since 10 o'clock this morning, plus finishing their matches late last night. I don't think. Yeah, that's a good shot. I don't think they're uh, like just woke up and playing the match now. They're both fatigued. They both ran a marathon, and now they've got to play a game of snooker, so... They're trying their best representing their countries. Two tremendous players. As for gentlemen off the table, they're amazing. How did you pop that? That was a great shot. Maybe it was a shot to nothing. V was teaching me, and... Uh, she become a semi-finalist and picking up a medal today. I find knowledge in the game from the snooker players. And how they play the shot is completely different to how I see it. So you got the red in the middle. That was a nice bounce. Close to the object ball. Be perfect. Just having the white cleaned. This could be costly. Five points behind. Incredible battle between both players. Whoever wins this match We'll go down to an incredible battler. Wow, he almost got it. Because both of these players are giving everything they have since 10 o'clock to where we are. How they're standing at the table, I do not know. I assure you they want a cup of tea and go home. But the world title is on the line to be crowned champion of the world is at stake. Oh, it's 
So it's the foul and a miss, six points again. And look at the, we talked about, the and I, we were talking about the foul and the miss and it's a shame she's not here because we're witnessing the foul and the miss rule. It's very important to identify why and how many times you can do it. But we know where we are. He has to hit it. He can't keep giving away six points. 44 plays 37. Slight adjustment. See how he's playing it? Just a little bit more side. So he's striking the cue ball around about 20 to 7. There it is. He's got to hit it. <sighs> At least he didn't hit the pink. Fifty five plays thirty seven. He knows how important this frame is. Great shot. Great shot. This green to the brown as a frame winner. This blue, he knows he's won the frame. He's making sure of it. But it's been an excellent performance 
in this break. And Muhammad is very close, but he's still got that journey. But the way he's playing is unbelievable. It really was. Now we're going to take a commercial break. We'll be back right with you. We can stay with you. We thought it was... Ladies and gentlemen, I've got a special guest. I say, how are you? I'm fine, thank you very much. How do you feel about this game? What's going on? Tell it's us your opinion. It's a very exciting game. At the beginning of the game, you, you couldn't know who would win. Um, the chances are 50-50, even though Mohamed Shah is leading 3-1. But I think still, uh, Habib has a good chance to come back in the game. As you always say, Pepsi, Habib is a potting machine, and so do Muhammad is as well. Wow, I didn't expect that. Um, I'm, I'm taken back. Well, first of all, we talk about both players. Now, this tournament, it's been an amazing tournament. They both played yesterday. A paddled since 10 o'clock today. How do you feel about going through all the mental pressures these players have gone through from your point of view as a snooker player? Well, before we do that, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I, I played I played in this tournament uh, and thank you very much for the Qatar Billiard and Snooker Federation as well as the IBSF for arranging such an amazing tournament here in Qatar. Um, and um, this year, I think um, I played much better than the previous years. Uh, and I hope to continue my good form in the coming years, of course. As, as this game, uh, we can see that uh, Mohammed has an early chance in this, in this frame. That could be um, a game changer if he takes this frame. Uh, and Habib could go into a lot of stress uh, if he loses this frame. We talk about stress in snooker, which we do have in pool. And the reality is, same billiard games, how much would it mean for both of these players to be crowned champion of the world? Well, it would mean the world for him, especially um, that last year Habib was a runner-up in six, uh, six reds. Uh, and he sees that he's a very um, close contender this year to become the champion of the world. Mohammed, on the other hand, has been away from the um, tournaments for so long, and after coming back to be crowned the champion of the world, it's going to boost his morale um, and, and uh, have a great uh, effect on his performance in the coming tournaments. And how do you feel representing your country in this event? 
Uh, I feel very proud being amongst the best of the best um, in the Middle East and of course in Asia and the world as well. Uh, it's a very tough tournament. Um, the tournament is uh, not an easy one to win. Even a single win uh, means a lot in this tournament. And I'm hoping that in the coming tournaments I would be uh, a better contender and reach the um, final stages, hopefully. Do you play pool? No, I've, I'm not a big fan of pool, unfortunately. Because, uh, oh man, you've got some great pool players who came to Qatar. We do. The Qatar Open Nine Ball Championships. I met them. And what I love about your country, I have been there for a holiday to, Green, uh, to the Green Mountain, and I've had a lovely time. You're all family, snooker players and pool players, total family, total respect for you guys. And that's, and that's because the number of the clubs that we have in Oman, where you can practice pool and snooker, are quite less than the other countries. So that's why you see people gathering, people going into different clubs. Uh, we have two, uh, three, four clubs uh, very well known in Muscat. And uh, usually players tend to go to them and you find uh, good gathering in, uh, in Oman. Did you have any big breaks in the tournament? Um, I had 66, 62, but I never crossed the 60s this time. You're in the 60s, that's when I was born, 1966, take care. <laughs> I'm showing my age oh, now. I did, I, did, I did score 66, so I guess... Oh. And do you know what I love about the atmosphere of both players, your snooker player ability, the gentleman conduct, the way I love if there's a foul, you both agree to it. And if the referee misses the ball after being fatigued for, I don't know how they do it, for hours on end, you all help each other to, to, to move the balls around. At the end of the day, um, the spirit is all what we talk about. And uh, a sportsman, uh, sportsmanship is, is what, what, what really matters. And I saw that even in the previous frame when Habib tried to snooker Muhammad behind the green and it didn't reach the green. He immediately accepted that it's a foul and he never argued. Exactly. Oh, when we come to the gentlemen of the sport, we are with, not only am I with one, one, those two out there, the two gladiators, are unbelievable gentlemen. Absolutely, absolutely. And I know them both uh, professionally and personally as well. Both Habib and Mohammed are great lads, fantastic lads, honestly. Now, I've been with Cancer Billiard Federation coming, it will be in December, 13 years, um, and being a volunteer to do the snooker and the pool commentary is the best ever. As we watch this one knock on the door, is the door open? Absolutely. It's an honor to meet players from the Middle East over the years and around the world. And everybody is nice to each other. We don't have argumentation. We all get on together. And when we're playing each other, we're, we don't cross the line. Does that make sense with to win? Of course, of course. Everybody wants to win and everybody wants to prove himself and of course uh, proves his country as well. Uh, but uh, that never means that we, we tend to leave our sportsmanship behind when in order to do so. So I think um, the two lads over there, over the, over the table, they resemble the sportsmanship in every way that it could be possibly resembled. And you had a very special day yesterday. I we did, we did. Tell us about it. It was the 53rd uh, National uh, Day for Oman. And uh, coincidentally, I was supposed to go back on the 14th and celebrate the National Day in my country, but uh, I extended for a week. And it was a very special occasion, and the gesture we saw from the Qatar Billiards Snooker Federation uh, team over here is, is quite, it was emotional, it was really emotional. Definitely with that big, I had a slice of cake. You did. <laughs> I saw you. And the most important thing is, what I still love to this day, you come over here and your family's waiting for you. Of course, of course. Uh, they always call me and they always ask me when I'm coming back. And uh, I've been away from them for almost um, 18 days now. 
And how do you feel about playing in the hotel this time? Um, it's a change of pace. Uh, it's nice. Uh, I liked I like the federation. I like the tables in the federation. But um, if you think about it, the last couple of tournaments, they were all in the federation, and it's it's a good change of scene. It's just change of place, um, and it's always easier to have the venue and the uh, in the hotel so that it's not far away from the room. Um, you, you don't tend to miss the transportation to and from the Federation if you need to. Definitely, we, we tend to play the pool tournaments for many years in uh, a football stadium, or should I say a handball stadium, and it's coaches back and forward, which sometimes disrupts the players. But now Cantabellius Federation are taking that to another level. And talking about taking to another level, what about the media? The media is great, excellent. Uh, I've been here since the first day uh, you started live streaming. And I remember seeing you streaming through an iPad or watching through an iPad. <gasps> I do remember that in the Federation. And to see, to see that evolve from where it was to where it is right now, it's really amazing, honestly. Thank you very much for that. Um, the, the whole reality will always be, um, people don't know who I am, but my name's Paul, I volunteer, volunteer for the commentary, and I play pool with the Qatar national team, and I train with them. And I've been a member of the Qatar team for coming 13 years, and uh, I love doing what I do. And then a gentleman come along called Mr. Abdullah, and he has took us to another level to, we call him Mr. Million, but it's best to call him Mr. Fantastic. What an amazing professional media person is. And he put us all together and all the camera crew. And we are all learning and we cannot forget about the legend, Mr. Boboda, 147. Of course. And he started off as a hobby, playing, uh, doing the photos. And he's become a professional photographer. Oh, what a shot. Now, was that a shot to nothing? It is, but uh, as we can see, he got lucky um, having a good angle on the green. I'm not really sure if he's going to put the green or stick uh, behind the brown. But the reds are open. If he pots it, he has a good chance to go and um, have a good heavy break. How important is this frame to be 4-1 up or 3-2 trailing by one frame? From both players, how would you feel going 3-1 up and having a system break here to win the frame? Well, both the player will do everything to take this frame. For Mohammed, it's very important for him to go 4-1 and, and establish a good three frames lead and one frame away from, from being crowned the champion of the world. For Habib, it's going to be easier for him if he takes this frame and be trailing only by one frame uh, in order to try and uh, build up his game until he, until he can be crowned the champion of the world. The balls couldn't be in a better position for Mohammed to clinch the frame with, a, with one visit. What would it mean to both of these players to be crowned champion of 2023? Would it change their lives? Would it? What I like when Ali O'Bailey won the men's division to be crowned champion of the world, he never changed. He remembered who we were. Very big congratulations to Ali and the Qatar uh, Snooker and Billiard Federation for uh, for this great achievement, honestly. And uh, I know Ali on a personal level. Yeah. And I can I, I could tell from the beginning that uh, before even he wins the men's tournament, that uh, this guy will never change, even if he wins the world championship. Exactly. And he is my training partner for pool, and I'm very honored to have that. And I've been training with him for over 11 years. And and I love the family as well. It's, it's just a family reunion. And then Michael Giorgio winning the six reds, and it's a brilliant performance. 
It was, and uh, Michael's a fantastic player. Um, I, I, I recently came to know that he was, uh, he, he played in the Crucible a few years back, and that was new to me. But looking at the performance uh, of Michael Giorgio, um, I wasn't uh, at all shocked when I heard this news. Unbelievable. We just saw the crowd there, the two referees, incredible. Trick V and his good lady's wife, um, amazing referees, and they've put all on a fantastic job. I can't referee. I know one thing, you guys have been playing all day since last night. I think there was a record last night if one guy finished it. One o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I was there, I saw the match, and um, it was really a record-breaking match uh, in terms of length, of course. Six frames in, uh, in 10 hours. Wow, so. unbelievable. I saw him play Bashar in the afternoon at two o'clock, and then he went next door at seven o'clock. So he had to play, keep on playing. Yeah, that was a lengthy match. Uh, it was a nice match though, uh, yeah. Bashar did everything uh, in his power, to be quite honest. I saw the match and he tried to come back, but uh, somehow he was, I think he was fatigued or stressed because oh, of a very definitely. long match. But again, these things makes you a stronger player in the future. Yes. Yeah. In the pool where we tend to, go, when we play in tournaments, we tend to go on a roller coaster of emotions but in snooker you go through the fatigue barrier which i find oh so difficult i can cope with that day after day as you as you play more and more tournaments and as you progress in tournaments these things will become easier to control over time it's just need a bit of experience bit of um, exposure and uh, after that it's going to be easy or not easy but it would be con controllable for you and I just saw in the crowd around the coach, Cameron, for the um, Amir, player from Iran. And they do so well, Iran as well. Now you're in a tour. Are you in any more tournaments uh, this week? Was it your tournament finished this week? Have you got the doubles? Have you got anything? Happening? No, that's it. That's it for us. Uh, unfortunately, we had uh, an emergency and oh. I have to go back uh, to Oman. Uh, but we were initially registered to play in the doubles as well. I thought you were. Well, first of all, I'm sorry to hear that news. And I hope everything goes well for you on that. As it's work related, um, we need to be there uh, in Oman uh, before before the holidays. We have holidays on 22nd and 23rd oh. for the National Day. So we are pre required to be there since some of us are working on emergency shifts. So that's why they need to be there in Muscat. Wow. By the way, I love your country. I went there for a holiday and made the Green Mountain done it for me. It was amazing. So it was Hiking. a pleasure to have you in, in, in Oman. Uh, oh, I love you. I love you. We went to the um, the hoe where you can jump into the water. Oh yeah, there. I know that. Oh, my wife said I wasn't allowed to jump. Did you? Though? No, I went down to the lower one, maybe about ten meters. And that was deadly enough. And there was divers at the bottom. There was a sea right through. Yeah. The divers were going out to the sea. It's a fantastic place. Um, and it's always cool during winter or during oh, summer. It's always definitely. cool. I love Oman. I really do. Here's a chance for Habib to come back into the frame. He's trailing by 31 points. It's a good opportunity. Do you see any trouble balls? I see the one to the left of the cushion. It is the left of the cushion and the one um, next to it. But if he gets a good angle on the pink or on the black, he could either open it or just land on it uh, to make it easier for him to be bought. Beautiful shot. The trouble ball for me would be the blue. Um, 
when the when the reds are spread this way you tend to want to have um, a security color for you either the pink or, or the blue but both the colors are off their spots which makes the focus more on the black and if he gets all blacks then he would be build up a good break and uh, uh, lower the difference with with Muhammad. Are you thinking about the brown at any stage in this game? I see that as a key ball out for the end of the game. What would you be thinking of the brown? Of course, um, for Habib, it's, it's an essential ball because he will need the, the brown. Even if he puts all the colors, all the reds with, with blacks and pinks, he would definitely still need the, the brown. But I think it's too early for Habib to be thinking of it since he is um, trailing now by almost uh, 15 points so the main focus for Habib would be um, building a good break trying to catch up with with Mohammed and uh, and think about the brown at a later stage how can you be playing from 10 o'clock to where we are now incredible stamina as well as accuracy is it improving your game as you're going along pushing the willpower to pot the balls and that focus how do you maintain that level of concentration well both the players they they only have one thing in their mind at the moment and that's it to be crowned the world champion um, and and that would give them all the strength and the mental stability to do so was asked to come up with um, some ideas, new ideas in snooker. I came up with a point system. Every red is minus eight points to your opponent. Um, but that will help at the end of the game. So this break of 30 is one ball away. And that's gonna be interesting to see how this is going to that red is going to play a major key and you're right about the blue it would definitely be easier to get into those two reds from the blue rather than doing it from the pink or black but I think Habib is taking these balls very well um, and he's keeping those two reds uh, at the end so that he can um, have a good angle either from the pink or black so this pink to take him to the red and that brown. We'll be playing a major part. How people start looking at the brown in a couple of shorts time. He will try to think, especially that the blue is off the spot and towards the pink and black which makes it difficult for him to get it from the brown. So it's either he's gonna try and open the brown from the yellow or green, or he will play, play safety. Fantastic shot. But if he keeps taking the blacks with those reds, he won't be needing the brown. He will need up to and including the green. Wow. Can I ever thank him? So this red will be the key to the frame. He hasn't come far enough and I've seen on this table the mist. Not only have you got to hit it true and accurate, you need a good bit of fortune. He hit it too hard. That is not going in. I've seen it time and time again. So will he get it? This is missable. And he didn't take the risk. And what a shot that was. It's an excellent shot indeed. He gave himself every chance to win this frame now. Mohammed needs to be very careful, not only hitting the red, but keeping it safe after he hits it.
He's missed it. But where's that cue ball going? They call this the shark shot. Great white. Where he's put it in behind the black. The last thing Mohammed wants now is to give Habib a free ball and a chance to clinch the frame before even he needs that uh, last threat. The difference is 18 now. This is what I love. The sportsmanship is incredible. Look at that, two gladiators agreeing where the white can hit and because they're bit behind the black. We have the technology to rewind, but we don't get involved with the referees in that respect because that's what they're there for. Well, and having two gentlemen playing uh, against each other definitely makes the job of the referee much easier. Definitely. So the referee's just slightly moving it. I wonder if you can come up with an idea and take a picture <coughs> with, your, with your phone. I don't know if that could work. And then they get really wired. I don't think they do that technology. No, they don't. Uh, I've seen I've seen the referees and the world champion getting back to the monitor in order for them to be um, spotting the colors or respotting the colors of the balls uh, correctly. Uh, well. So that yellow was so close and dropping in, but this red, what a comeback. And he's not on the yellow. He's not on the black or pink either. I think he can swerve around the green to get the yellow, but the position to the next yellow is not guaranteed. So 27 on the table, color of available. So he's taking the yellow. He's coming off the knuckle of him. Yes, what a great shot that was. As the yellow gets respotted. Now, the safety. Over to you, How, which way would you go? Well, only needing two balls. I think he's gonna try and put it. And get a good, good cue ball to the green. Was that pressure? It was. I can tell. He w he didn't land on the yellow perfectly. And he tried to finish the game fairly quickly, and that's led to the mistake and him missing the yellow. So he's trying to park the white in behind. Hamid played a very clever shot. He tried to open up the brown a little bit. He knows that he needs all the colors. Oh, that's good thinking. And it's, it was difficult to get to the blue from the brown where it was. It's much easier now. It's still difficult though. I like your concept of attacking safety. And once again, the shark has arrived. The great white behind the black. It's a very good shot from Habib. Uh, he did not even only concentrate on getting the cue ball behind the black, but he also made sure that the yellow crosses the middle pocket so he doesn't leave a pot on for Mohammed.
So we've got the World Championship Billiards taking part. Do you play billiards? I played it once or twice before, but I'm not really that good. Hopefully one day I will participate in the English billiards as well. I saw that Pankaj today won, and uh, many congratulations to him. He's a fantastic player. And when's the final? It was today, he won. Oh, he's won? He's won. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, congratulations. Great friend. Great, I, I tell you, holiday friend. I'm so lucky. That's so it. That was frame ball to Habib. So there's Brown to the corner. To make it 3 2. Or in snookers. But what a performance to come back. Did. He was 31 points behind, and to come back, it's, it's great, great performance from Habib. 22 on the table. And 20, 26 is the difference, so Mohammed needs one snooker to tie at the moment. Which way is he going? Uh, behind the black? Behind the black, I think. Oh, I'm getting better. But he needs to ensure that the brown is safe. There it is. Perfect. Oh, just kiss the black. He will be disappointed. Whoever wins this tournament is having a holiday because they're going to need it. Yeah, both the players they played until late last night and since this morning they've been playing. Tactical battle. Willing that oh no, that's gonna be difficult. That's definitely gonna make it a little bit difficult for Mohammed to get the snooker behind the black. Now that black is tied up to the cushion. But he still has the pink and blue. Over to you. Where's the snooker? Uh, it's very important for Habib to keep the brown at that end of the table, away from the pink and blue. So he makes it a little bit difficult for Mohammed to get the snooker. Is he trying to go in behind the blue? Possibility? Or take the pot on? Oh, I think he will take the pot on. Um, wow. As I said, he will do everything to keep the brown at that end of the table. He is that. That's the worst and bad luck wow. fortune I have seen all tournament. How can you find a snooker? If you can help us out on this one. <laughs> he will definitely have to play it in a way um, to open either the black or the pink. It's impossible to have a snooker from here. So is he looking to bring the black off the cushion? Definitely. He needs to, either pink or black. Well, if the blue went in, I felt the frame was gone. But in the meantime, how can you find a snooker from there? A 
and that's a clever shot because he's not letting him oh how about this shot take the blue and bring the pink and black off or is that too risky oh, it's too risky with 22 he only needs one snooker to win and i'm not sure if he's gonna yeah, as i said he wouldn't be able to open the pink or black from that shot from that angle but here's a chance now how, uh, he can the play the pink and open the black ah okay It's very important that he keeps the pink safe after attempting to open the block. So how can he get the power generated in the cue ball to move the black? And look at the fatigue. He knows it's a big ask. He knows it's very difficult, but he will still try. He's been out in that arena non-stop for since 10 o'clock this morning. Incredible. Now yeah, we're closing up to 11 hours now. God. Unbelievable. Is he trying to nestle the cue ball in behind the black? There it is. But he needs to travel. And the good news for Habib is that the black is still stuck into the cushion. That will make him a bit more relaxed. I don't know. I don't think, is it, is it impossible to move without leaving it somewhere in the open? No, he's pointed his, oh, this is a question I like to ask you. We do this in the pool world. We tend to use our cue to indicate where we're going. Do you do the same? Yeah, we do the same. Um, we want to see where the object ball is going to hit the cushion and try to determine what would the path be. That will give us a more clearer idea on where it will finish us. Try to stun it across. Here's a chance for Muhammad to open up the black. Oh yeah, come across with the devil. Exactly. And I really appreciate your knowledge here in the commentary booth. He's done it in such a way. Now that's a very clever shot. Instead of hitting it hard, opening the black and not knowing where the pink would finish up, he's trying to force Habib to open up the black for him. It's a very clever shot. Clever shot. Did he go for the middle? I think what Habib was trying to do is to prevent the pink colliding with the black and opening the black. It's much safer for Habib if the black stays where it is right now. Yeah, definitely. <coughs> so he's got to avoid the pink from going in and controlling the white. Shot. That's the last shot from Mohammed. So he was trying to avoid playing at great pace because we've had a couple of incidents where the cue ball traveled and then um, it was scratched. Oh, 
Oh, what a shot that would have been. Double kiss. Yeah, the top of the queue. So there's pink to secure the frame. Great shot. Three, two. It's been a great game. It's been a great game so far. And both of the players are playing really well. Both of them are champions. Both of them oh, definitely. had a lot of trophies for the countries, for themselves. Being in the final is no much stress or pressure for them. And that's why we're able to see a very good match in between those two. But it's the stamina you go through is incredible. I, I, oh, I'm sorry, but I don't know how you do it. Is there any any information you can give us how you maintain that 11 hours coming, to, well, nearly 10 hours coming to... Uh, well, it's very important to maintain your physical abilities. Um, uh, the more you run, the more you play other sports, other physical sports, the more you are ready uh, and your mind is ready to uh, be operating for long hours. And I know both the lads over here, they are both gymnastics, they do running, they run a lot of kilometers. Um, and I know one of them is, uh, is a big football fan, he plays football. So physically, they are both ready uh, to, to spend a lot of hours playing the game. It's such a difficult game, this game. Now, I've learned on the break, it's the back row and the, la and the first red either side. So I'm watching your break system where we make the wing ball on the pool table. You make the safety break on the last ball. Yes, we do. We tend to do, and even even when you touch the last red, you need to make sure they don't touch it thin or thick. You need to touch it half ball in order for the cue ball to be able to travel back to the bulk area without leaving a pot on. But if you make a sm small mistake, um, either catch it thin or thick, you might go in off or you might collide with the blue on the way back to the bulk. Now I tend, I have got a bit of news for you in snooker in the Ramadan Qatar Championships I came third um, in six red so I got a little bit of knowledge about snooker how to play but what I'm explaining see this red I'm all in I'm going for it wow I'm a great believer and go uh, I, I just want to pop the balls if it goes in not a problem but if I miss not a problem part of the game. Oh, that's a very big miss from Habib. He kept Mohammed amongst the balls. Now, the way I deal with missing balls is blank it out. Because as soon as you start thinking, oh, I missed again, I missed again, it was summoned to your mind that you're missing. And don't be afraid to miss. That's my motto. Well, missing a lot of balls can be really fatal for a snooker player. It tends to shake his confidence and uh, he will start missing a lot more. And that's even in the professional world. The power in that shot. <laughs> I feel, in my opinion, this is a big fr frame for Mohammed. If he loses it, well, definitely this is a big frame for Mohammed. He 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 wanted to be four one ahead, and he was ahead in the previous frame. He was leading by 31 points. Habib managed to clinch that frame, and this will start making Mohammed thinking twice about every shot that he's taking. Mohammed is going to play shot to shot making sure that he doesn't miss especially the easy balls and try to make a good break and a good lead.
That's a nice shot coming around the red. So as the only thing is he needs to go back to the blue now. The black is not portable to the left pocket. Excellent shot from Mohammed. Unfortunately, he wasn't be he wasn't able to be uh, to hold for the blue. But that's really a good shot. shot now because the planks tied up to the left might be oh it's wide open from this camera angle so you want this to keep high and I'm looking at the other camera angle the pink goes we're just saying I'm gonna look at the angle for you guys yeah there it is flies in the pocket one of the pink goes that's a bonus for him I don't think it does we'll have to take the mid-range blue How difficult is he using this? I saw it in the tournament uh, this week. They used the bridge identical to that one, and then they put the rest on top. Yeah, that's that's uh, a new technique. No. Instead of using this one neck, yeah, this one neck is more difficult to control. I call it the catapult. I think, it's, I think it's called the Swan Neck. Yes, it is. In pool, what they've come up with now is an adapter to put on your braking cube so you can jump with the rest. Wow, I've never seen that. Yeah, yeah. It's an adapter. It's a plastic see-through adapter which you put on your brake cube. And they use the brake cube. Uh, they use the uh, rest as the jumping. So yeah, it's all tech, different technology stuff. That's a great job from Habib. He didn't leave anything for Mohammed. And the safety as well is difficult. He will need to open up the bunch. the side on this shot. It's a very clever shot from Mohammed. You 
though it's 21 points ahead, is it worth playing safe? Would you? For me, I would take the brown along the rail, around the cushion, sorry, and then play safe and get that four points. I think you'll stick him behind the blue. Is that the right shot? Well, there's no obvious spot in here, and there are no reds in the open. So what Habib is trying to do, he's trying to force Mohammed to play into the bunch yeah. and try and open up one or two reds for him to start the break building. So the safety outweighs the taking the brown to the right corner. I like your strategy. And has he hit it? Has he gone through the gap? This could be costly. So did you play the red? Or go back for the foul and the miss? Yeah, I'm not surprised. That's a difficult spot. That's the blue is at the end, the other end of the table, so there's no obvious colour after this red. I think Khalid took the right decision in here. With the way Mohammed has played, I think if he catches the punch in his next shot, he will leave Habib with one or two reds. The reason why both players are sitting down, fatigue is playing a major part. They've been battling in the early hours of the morning and they're here right now between 10 o'clock and where we are. And they are both exhausted. I don't know if they're going to get out of the chair. They're struggling. Absolutely, absolutely right. I saw them after the third frame where they decided to take a short break, 10 minutes break. And they both went for refreshing and uh, having a cup of tea or a sip of uh, fizzy drink just to increase the sugar level in their, in their, in their body. So you're absolutely right. They are both fatigued. They are both stressed. Yeah, it's been a very long day for them. In the pool world, we don't have that time scale. We finished the tournament by, by then. Yeah, well, pool is very quick. <laughs> it's very nice. And what they've done um, to help the snooker players play pool is they've shrunk the pockets to 4.2 inches. So your cue action will be immaculate for pool. Wow, I saw I saw a couple of professionals, um, Jack Lesowski, uh, Jim oh, yeah, well. yeah. They both they both played in the last pool tournament. I know that Ronnie played before. So it just goes to show. And the table company is the official sponsor table for the Qatar Open. So congratulations to them, Rasson, who have put on incredible performance in support for Qatar. That's a nice shot, but no reward. It's a great shot, but he was unlucky kissing those reds. You can see the frustration in his face. He hides it well, doesn't he? He is, he is. He has a good poker face. He is of experience and motivation. And the special one, dedication. When you're running up that hill, can't walk up it. Gotta run it to become champion. But he is one frame away from being on the hill. In the pool terminology, when it's level, it's the hill. And when you're one frame away, it's called the hill. And your opponent has to somehow find the elevator to get there. So as you can see now, this red by the black, it's risky. A draw back. Yeah, he's going for it. I, I, what the way I look at this is the presentation tells me he's going for it. 
And there it is. A great shot. You could see the determination on his face when he was attempting the shot. He knew that he was going all in. If he misses it, he would leave him amongst the balls. If he pots it, then it's a chance. And after this break, I think we're all going to go for a cup of tea. We've been here since 10 o'clock this morning to bring you non-stop action. Well, I've only been here for a couple of frames and I can feel the mouth dried already. So I know now what hard job you're doing, Paul. Wow. Thank you very much. And, and do you know what it goes down to? It's dedication for the team, the the. the, the crew as you can see when i'm on my own up to 10 hours a day my team crew have got headsets and nobody hears me i'm all on my own <laughs> my wife said to me how are you getting on today i said i'm talking to a wall <laughs> so you do i tend to talk too much because snooker is about little is best but I'm a great believer in giving the passion and trying the to understand shot, it. The next shot is very, very important. It will open up reds. If he gets a good angle on the black, then he could put, put one of the reds above the black. If he not, then he will go for the red by the pink to the middle pocket. What a beautiful shot. Beautiful. Now this red, do you take it to the middle and look at the score? Uh, he's trying, he's, he's now building up a good lead. We still have a couple of reds open. I don't think he needs to open the bunch yet. I have news for you. We almost saw a 147 in the Masters. So close. Wow. Mohammed, who's sitting down, watching his opponent play, almost had a 147. He was so close. He missed an easy red. Nine blacks, sorry, nine reds, nine blacks. And it was all there. In the men's division, I saw 10 blacks, 10 reds. Too much power, but where is that white? It's okay. I remember watching Habib making a 147 in a deciding frame two years ago. It was amazing. Wow. After the game, I asked him, and he said, after the fifth or sixth black, I knew that the 147 was on. He was so concentrated on winning the game. And after the sixth black only, he realized that, oh, I'm very close to making a 147, so let me focus even more. When I did the World Championships in 2021, I did his highest break, did the commentary on his highest break. And I made a terrible mistake because um, I said he was shaking because of nerves, but he wasn't. There was nothing to do with that. No, he has that shake uh, on every shot. But the impressive thing is that it doesn't stop him from being a world-class player. Absolutely. And the pool players told me, and uh, I said, oh, I didn't know that. They were lovely to me. And, uh, I can't believe how many pool players from around the Middle East uh, come and ask me for a photo, I'm so lucky. But he's gone through that cluster. I think he's okay. Now, this is a big shot. Do you take the blue on? Do you take the pink on? Over to you. Well, that's a very big ask. 
with all the fatigue and the stress that they're going through. Maybe a safety. He's gone for the blue. He's gone all in. And where's it landed? Well, he was definitely rewarded for the brave decision he made. So this red. And look at the score. It was unlucky to put the black into the cushion. That would, would have been a big help, seeing that the pink and black are now tied up. They only go to the corners. So this is not over by any means now. It's the journey when I interview the players, when they pick that world title up, I ask them one question, how do you feel? And the journey you got here, it's an incredible journey, it's a lifetime journey to get here where we are. Because you only win this title for the first time, to maintain it, it's very difficult. But on the first time of winning any tournament at this level, you remember how you got there. And that's so important. The coaches, the training partners, and that journey of traveling. A lot of credits to the both players playing today. They, they jumped through a lot of hoops. They, they played against world-class players. Um, and they really did their best to reach to the final and both of them are giving it everything now to make sure that they don't go out empty-handed Either a trophy or a historical performance that they would remember for the rest of their lives And I always remember it's not what you've achieved to be here It's what you can do in the tournament and these two players have put on their greatest ever performance of their lives. I don't think they've ever done this before. Mental fatigue, non-stop playing, but that human error of missing that red. It's, it's an easier table for Habib now. The difference is not that high, it's only four points now before this pink or blue. That's perfect. Now look at the scores. Two points in it. That brown is another key ball. But we've seen comebacks. And if this goes to three each, I think we're all going down for dinner. We need at least another 20 minute break or something. We need something to keep these guys going. <coughs> Well, if it's levels up, then it's all down to the best of three. Oh. And this red is the key red. It's got to get the angle. It looks easy. I think Habib will try and take the pink off this red because that means that he only needs up to and including the brown. So he doesn't have to think about the positional play from brown to blue. That now, was so close. But now he will need to make sure that he gets a good position and good angle on the brown. Now, 
I like your strategy, by the way. I like your thinking. But this shot is very difficult. It looks easy, but he has to control the cue ball. Perfect. Or is it? Did you see the cue ball deviate there? It did, it did. And the cushion took a lot of the pace of the cue ball. And that's why he is not perfect on this yellow. It's still not over yet. 15 points of difference. But the way the pace of that cue ball, it was almost like quicksand. Just stopped that ball. But right, how difficult is this yellow now? Putting the yellow is not that difficult, but putting the yellow and getting a good angle and good position on the green, that's going to be the big ask in this shot. <gasps> wow. He just made it and knocked on the door. And it's gone in. To control this green for the brown, it's going to be the key for the game. And if we're set at three apiece, there's going to be a round of applause going on here. Great achievement to come back. Is that why he didn't take it on? Yes, because it's very, very important that he takes both green and brown. <sighs> He's left it. It's not easy. But this green is a frame winner. This is very difficult under the conditions. This will go down as a under pressure green. Pots it as a frame winner. Miss it, could be a frame loser. What happened there? He missed it. He tried to attempt it, but he missed it. He's left a possible double. All in on the double. Hold for the brown. The present. I'm looking at the presentation, the footwork. This is... Oh, I don't know. Because players tend to... Oh, what a shot. It's a very good shot. He made it very difficult for Habib to escape from this shot. Both the players are very patient. They are waiting for a good chance to clinch the frame. They don't want to take any unnecessary risks. This is interesting. Because Mohammed has potted these. And he does run the cue ball through. He has potted this. But will he do it? Oh, it, no, he's going safe. Yeah. He's hitting around about 10 past, well, 10 to 2 on the cue ball. And where's the white? Did you see one of the frames when they kept on potting on the white? Yeah, so I think the, there's a little bit deviation, not necessarily because of the balance of the table, but because of the fingerprints finger marks and the chalk marks on the on the cloth but he's left it he is
has left it. Not too risky. But will willpower stop you from potting them? Pushing your body too far, trying too hard, as we watch the white go behind the brown. So close. Now, the black will be in play here. You brought them behind the black. That's what, that's, that's what the players tend to do. Try and hide the black. He's gone for behind the pink. And that's an excellent shot. Yeah, you can see the little tap on the table from Mohammed. He acknowledges how good shot this was. This is missable. Why doesn't Mohammed try and swerve around? Has he got it? He's got it. What a shot. That's an excellent shot. Not only he got the green, but he got it safe as well. So this green is playing a major part in this frame. That's a clever shot. Hide behind the green from the pink. But I'm looking at the camera angle. We're just going to get the camera angle for you. Can he pass the pink? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. He's going to swerve it around the pink. Possible hold behind the black. Possibility. But right now. This is under tremendous pressure. Oof. That was so close. The jaws of the pocket. Yeah, I think he got lucky here getting the green safe. What a shot! He played it. We call that the backdoor double. That was a very good shot knowing that if he doubled and it went in, it's a natural angle going back, going down to the brown, and he only needs green and brown to make it 3-3. Three, three. 22 on the table. So this brown, where we car is snookers, He's missed it. He's missed it. But he's missed that brown. Unbelievable scenes. We are witnessing. We call this in the pool world. Welcome. Have you got your ticket for the roller coaster ride? Is it another double? 100%. Take care. I'm going all in. There it is. Goodbye, Brown. 
welcome another frame did you notice he played it with some element of safety look where the cue ball finished this is awesome one of the most famous lines in pool it's legendary nightmare having a nightmare but for me it's a roller coaster of emotions and if we get to three free I think we're gonna go and get some popcorn This brown, uh, this blue. Can he? S oh, he's going off, going off two rails, uh, two cushions. One, two. He's hit it. Very good. happening why he's gonna try and get a snooker from the pink but how difficult is it to get it behind the black it's definitely more difficult having only two balls on the table rather than three but he must have something in mind so is it I don't understand Looks good. A little bit over the pace. Don't understand. What's happening? Unbelievable scenes as we watch the paint go to the middle for the frame. Well, we're gonna. Well, we're gonna go and get a cup of tea. So we're going to pop in for a commercial break. Ladies and gentlemen, do not miss any action. And I hope you come back. I will be back. Come on. I'll get the popcorn. Welcome back to Qatar. In a world where precision meets strategy, and every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. Get ready for a snooker spectacle. The World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill and strategy. World Championships, Qatar 2023, where champions are made and legends are born. Welcome back to Qatar! In a world where precision meets strategy, and every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. Get ready for a snooker spectacle. The World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill and strategy. World Championships, Qatar 2023, where champions are made and legends are born. Welcome back to Qatar! In a world where precision meets strategy, and every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. Get ready for a snooker spectacle. 
the World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill.
welcome back ladies and gentlemen just had a quick tea, um, cup of tea break but emotional gives me great honor to introduce my special guest thank you very much Paul from the looks of it it's a very close frame the black is tied up pink only goes to the to one pocket starting to open up it's a good chance and I really appreciate all the help for this world championship the knowledge of the snooker game so we have a pool players point of view and a snooker players point of view on the game and I haven't got too much knowledge on the game and the strategy it gives me great honor to have a well-known snooker player with me and you've been in the tournament and all the way through so you know more than I will ever know because of your experience on the green bays so why did he complain there was it a kick on the blue I think it was a kick or he thought that the blue's not going straight to the pocket. There are quite few fingerprints, finger marks on the table. But he's having the white clean, so I think it's it's a kick. game is so much to learn it's an excellent recovery shot he's back in prime position again I feel with Habibi wins this frame I got a feeling a century break will take place. That's how I see it. It's not guessing because I'm a great believer in feeling the game. And it's, he hasn't performed to his best ability. And what I mean by that, he can bang in centuries in the blink of an eye. But Muhammad has other ideas. And with that cluster of four reds, which will play a part in this break, be interested to see the outcome. And to have this red, yeah, I'm looking at the angle from the blue down. See where he's coming across, taking the, is he taking the pink? Red next to the pink, free the pink. Oh, that's indicating that's fine. He's taking the red to the corner. The knowledge of snooker is unbelievable. You've got to have total respect to you guys. It's very important to plan your break. Know which red to take next. You go for the easier balls and you go for the balls who will open the path for other balls. So I think after this red, Habib will start thinking or thinking to take the reds next to the pink to free up the pink. Yeah. So this red and open up. The red and the pink. There it is. You caught it. That's a great shot. He freed the pink to all the pockets now. And the red and the black are just waiting. 
And what I like about this game, the point game, get far in front, you're almost feeling comfortable to start winning the match. Because you're one frame away from the hill. And Mohammed is looking on. And I just walked, as we went and got a cup of tea, I walked through the crowd. And the atmosphere is picking up in there. The way, of, and we're warm. Usually when we sit here, we are in a fridge freezing so the temperatures change in the table players are feeling comfortable and so also the audience are feeling the tense of the match i saw when i was working out a uh, few people watching through the youtube channel everybody's watching this game everybody's interested and excited to see who's gonna win So the break is building and that red is just waiting and how important is this pink? Has he got it? I don't think it's going to reach. He's got it. Excellent shot. That's what an excellent shot. shot. This red, why is he taking the red by the black? Is it too risky at the moment? I think he'll go for it after this pink. He's trying to find a way. I'm gonna be positioned. I'm gonna have to open up and disturb those four dots on the cushion. So this pink, I saw something then, fatigue played a part, it's played a major part, yeah, he's going for a pain barrier, they both are. I think he overthought, uh, I'm trying to establish a good angle to disturb the reds and with the fatigue that they are going through. I think that led to the missing of those of the pots. So though that cluster of three reds. So do you pick them off one by one or do you try and find an angle to kiss them all off? Would have been much easier to go into them if the black was on spot. But any unnecessary force or extra force on this black would make it miserable. So it's a containing safety after this. Oh, I've seen them knock on the door and they don't go in. But uh, the safety now is in behind the cluster. The 
green and the yellow and the brown up in that area and bring out some of the reds he needs to be careful the frame is still on he trails by 28 points Excellent shot. Using the blue as a cover. But can he see it? I don't think it's covered. I think he can see it. He will play it uh, as a shot on, I think. Fatigue is playing a major part. That's the first in cricket. They call it a wide. But that wasn't even close to the pocket. <coughs> it was a wide, I'm afraid. He was very fortunate not to leave a direct pot on or an easy pot on. Cause a strategy. They're trying to get that Cooper behind that yellow. Well, the yellow, green and brown are situated perfectly for a good snooker. So this red, to take him up to the bow carrier. How difficult is this to hit? Hit it heavy. Almost crashed, crashed into the blue, but uh, not too sure here. Would you go for the red to the corner? I would. I would try to get the cue ball as close as possible to the three colours and then play safety or snooker him behind one of those. Wow. Did you like that reverse side? And that's got to be an incredible shot. It's an excellent shot. The amount of side he put on the kill ball is amazing. So the willpower to become champion of the world is playing a major part for both of these players. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at that in behind the green. Is it there? Is it there? It is. What an excellent shot. The great white shark has arrived. What a great white that was. It's a best of three now. Every frame counts. Gotta hit it. No hesitation. How difficult is this to get out of? And the points are adding up. Every point counts. better. What a shot. Round of applause there. Even we're clapping. That's clever. He's tried to build another wall there. With black out of commission, pink on the other end of the table, and the reds are closing each other. I think Habib is trying to maintain the difference 
build a small lead as he gets a chance and try to win this frame. He has to be careful with his hand. Yeah, he's not there. But where's the red? Where is the red? Yeah, the fatigue is playing a part. This is so important, this red. Deep breath. Willie, pot it. He does. Did you hear the cue? Is his cue okay? It made a big donk. He had a look at the cue. I don't know if one of the joints broke or a tip or he hit the ferrule, but he had a deep look at his cue. So there's a malfunction, a possibility in the queue. If there is a malfunction in the pool world, we have shafts available. So do you have a time scale to put a, tie, a tip on and if anything happens to your queues, do you, do you have a spare queue? Um, not, not sure about spare queues, but if a tip goes off or breaks during the match, then the referee grants 10 to 15 minutes to go and fix a new tip. So let's Almost. hope. Almost every snooker player comes in with a bunch of tips with him. Yeah. Just in case he breaks or the tip goes off, comes out, comes out, then they have a spare tip with them. But how difficult is it to play? Do you have used tips? No. Oof. How difficult is it to put a new tip on him? It doesn't take much time. Um, usually two or three shots and then wow. and then you get used to it. Never knew that. We tend to have two or three different shafts. Uh, we have carbon fiber shafts. Uh, it depends on the temperature of the, in the room. Do you wear a glove for the Q action? I noticed some of the snooker players are now using gloves and I think that's down to the humidity around us and the yeah. snooker queue doesn't go smoothly. Exactly. Uh, they can be queuing smoothly. I never tried it to be quite honest. I don't see myself playing with a glove. Mm. So I know what to get you for a present. Not a glove. Next time I see you. Baby Johnson powder would be great. <laughs> now we are witnessing history in the making Habib is one right away <sighs> yeah that, that tends to happen when you have a frame ball or match ball coming but he was very fortunate to get a cover he missed that Formality red, and it is fatigue. They've been here since 10 o'clock this morning in the early hours of the night. Non stop action for the pair of them. So, congratulations. But that's misfortune. It's going in behind the yellow in the green. Well, this is a very difficult table for Mohammed. He's trailing by 38 points almost every color except the brown is either out of commission or on the cushion two reds available uh, it's a big ask but if anybody can pull this frame it would be Mohammed. and with the blue tied up and the pink that was to suit him but why isn't he putting it behind the yellow and green wow that's why. Clever thinking. Did you see that shot? I just saw that shot. It was. He knows that he only needs that tread to go 39 with only 35 available on the table. OK, 
bushes and everything in the open. But he's left it to the middle. It's not easy. Presentation's looking good. He knows that he only needs this red. This is it. He's got it. So the brown. If it goes in, he's a step closer to become the champion of the world. Beautiful. Now, this red. You try and put it in behind the green, the, right. the cue ball. He will try and put the red in the safest possible place. Oh, what a shot. So to see the difference, 35 on the table. <coughs> this is risky and missable. Did he hit that? He yeah. Did, he caught the red first. Just fine. Clever. Skillful. We are witnessing a master of the World Championships of 2023. Or should I say masters? And it's a master class for me because I am fairly enjoying this match. And look at the wall building up again. That brown, yellow and pink. Yeah, he won't be pleased knocking the brown into the cushion. It's not in his favor. What a shot. What a shot. Oh. He was so close. Another inch or two, and he would be perfectly behind the black. This is incredible. I'm starting to enjoy this match from the beginning to the end. We will see this through all together to see who would be crowned champion of the world. But wait a minute, wait a minute. Where is the cue ball going? Oh, did you see that? Tapped him on the back, said sorry. What sportsmanship that is. Well, Habib would love to see this red disappear, whether he pots it or Mohammed pots it. It would mean that eight points are eliminated from the table. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. We are watching a master get this black. He has to pop this black. He's knocked on the door. Yeah, I think he will concede, yeah. It's end of frame. But we'll stay with you. So tell us a little bit more about yourself. Well, I started playing snooker in 1999. Uh, funny thing, I used to escape school and play snooker. Wow. 
Yeah, I was very passionate about snooker and still am, still I am. But unfortunately, I had to stop playing between 2008 and 2019. So I stopped playing for 11 years, and that did a great damage to my performance. Yeah. But since 2019, I've been participating in the tournaments, and I've been playing, practicing, trying to absorb everything from good players, good coaches, um, etc., etc. And uh, I've managed, I've managed to do well in, in in my country as well as represent my country outside in in various tournaments, Asian tournaments, World Championship, uh, West Asian, the Arab. It has been a wonderful journey for me, and I hope to continue. You are, every time I see you, you've been a complete gentleman. Thank you very and much. And it's uh, an honor always to be with you, going through the uh, emotional side of snooker. I don't really do snooker commentary. Um, I do more of pool commentary, but I have done one or two world championships. A staggering 43. And I've enjoyed everyone. Yeah, I remember. I, I remember every year I come, and you keep telling me that I've, I've, I've not yet, that you've noticed me improving, and you like my cue action. Every time you see me, you tell oh. me that. Oh, how can you remember <coughs> that? That's unbelievable. You. I think you, you got. I think we're going to have to give you a stage name. But my stage name is Pepsi because I won the Pepsi challenge in my twenties. But uh, and that's why I'm called Pepsi. Okay. Went in with the Pepsi tournament. There you go. Okay, I was wondering why they call you Pepsi. Now I know why. Ah, there you go. I'm an English eight ball player. Uh, back in the days, um, I used to hang around with. Gareth Potts, Mick Hill. Mick Hill, when he was 15 years old, he was my doubles partner. So um, I grew up with Darren Appleton and Chris Malling many years ago on the IPA tour. So I was a pro English eight ball player for many years. And then when I moved to Qatar, I became a nine ball player. But uh, I love my snooker. And it's important to remember what the Federation have done for me. And in return, I come and support them as well. So as we watch now, this is a very important frame for Mohammed. Will he come back? Now his break is the first red in the back row. Will fatigue play a part? Oh, he hit the second one. That's uh, why when it came up. When you hit the second one, you tend to open up the bunch a little bit more. And you have one of the reds going close to the blue, which would leave a pot on for your opponent. I'm talking about leaving a ball on this red in the middle. I remember what I said. Sentry break. It's always on. If I predict this, this will be unbelievable but he has to get the century break for it to happen well it would be great for Habib to have a century break in the last frame he needs in the world champion but I'm sure all what he thinks about now is have a winning break to go over the line and be crowned the champion of the world that's our cameraman we apologize our cameraman uh, made a noise first one in the whole tournament that's why Abby we came back off on his cue the head referees come up to speak to us first time we've ever done that in, the, in hundreds of hours of uh, filming and that's why we whisper sometimes because our voice echoes over the platform which is around our surroundings so we got this giant board with a screen and you can hear us that's why we whisper and it's important to remember we took give total respect for these players i can talk at normal pace and normal loudness 
and it'll be echoing in the room. In our cinema screen is turn the table, the snooker table upside on its side, and that's our screen. It's just an incredible setup. So as we watch the cube all being cleaned, we talked about the century break. Happy he can get it. But will he? Well, it's incredible to notice that a couple of hours back, Habib was 3-1 down, and he managed to pull three straight frames. Leading by one frame now, and needing only one frame to be crowned the world champion. We're coming up to over four hours of play. Four hours and 13 minutes. What a shot that was, coming high enough for the blue. So he's got that red in the open. How difficult, uh, uh, my highest breaking snooker is 97, but that was many years ago. But how difficult is it to get these centuries? <sighs> he's okay. Getting a century is very difficult, uh, but with determination, hard work, and good practice, I think you'll be able to knock a few centuries very soon, Pepsi. So this red, to keep the century going, can he get it? He's missed it, because fatigue's played a part. <coughs> So my prediction of a century, it didn't happen. The shot before that was a problem. He landed on the blue, he queued. He wasn't certain to go into the bunch or play for the loose red. And I think that was a mistake. Tough red to the middle. Got to hit it firm, it won't go in. Too soft. That's what I'm saying. I've seen them all week. If you hit it at that pace, it ain't going in. You want to hit it firmer. Tactical battle. Will this suit Muhammad though? Muhammad is very strong uh, when it comes to tactics. But I didn't think that the tactical battle will start very soon in this frame. Everything was shown telling me that Habib is going to score high. But again, in the tactical battle, I think Muhammad is having a little bit, little bit of an edge over Habib. So the reds above the blue are causing a major problem to get the cue ball back to the balk line. But I'm a great believer in attacking the game get the points but in this condition they've been here battling all day it's going to be difficult to get the concentration going but what a great safety shot that was that's a good shot he ensured he tried to make sure that he covers up the red on the other end of the table for plants in the cluster I don't see anything the recovery shot to hide that red behind the blue is very clever 
So he's just nestling into the pack. But will he make it? I don't think he will. It's well, too it soft. Seems, it seems short of pace. So the foul and the miss. Yeah, because you have that foul miss. Is it two times? If you got an open red, you lose the frame. It's three times, but oh, you three get times. One, but you get warned after the second miss, and that's why Habib decided to go for the open red. He, d he doesn't want to be warned because it will add more pressure into him. So this red in the middle. <sighs> so close, but wait a minute. What's happening? What is happening? <coughs> in the pool world, we call that lady luck. What do you call that in the snooker? That's a very important fluke at this stage of the game. <laughs> Unbelievable. That was an unbelievable shot. This could change your game. But he hasn't left much. I'm looking at the camera angles. We're just going to get it for you. So there it is, and that was good fortune. And you see the crowd building up. I believe he's going for us in the corner. He's going all in. He's gone for the middle. He's missed it. Where's that red gone? It's okay. He tried to play that with some element of safety, but I think he's left a very thin cut to the corner. I think Mohammed is going to take that on. Great shot. Great shot. It really was. Yeah, the problem with these shots is that when you have a thin cut coming, you never know where the cue ball is going. So you tend to rely on good fortune after you put that thin cut. Fatigue is kicking in. That was so heavy on the cue ball. Yeah, he's hesitated. He knows that this is a tough shot. He's only leaving that red in the open what he's going for. Am I right? Or is that... I think it's... So it's a tough shot to take on. Plus you never know where the red will end up if he misses it. Ah! <gasps> It's all happening. Everything's knocking on the doors. Yeah, Habib has had a couple of misfortunes uh, where he went in off with the cue ball. And I think that stuck into his mind. Whenever he plays a safety shot, he keeps an eye on his cue ball. He's expecting it to go in off any time. Why 
Why is he trying to get the white in the pocket? He's not trying to get it in the pocket, <laughs> he's trying to get it on the left side of the table because that's where it makes it a little bit difficult for Muhammad to come back to the bulk. He was unfortunate to leave the red on the right side of the table because that gives Muhammad a good and easy path to come back. Well, good fortune there. Trying to hide behind the yellow possibility. And that red in the ball carrier parked. It ain't going anywhere. That will complicate things for both the players when it comes to tactical play. Containing safety, and all of a sudden, the colours are going back to the bulk line. Four hours and 30 minutes playing time in this match very shortly. Is he trying to open is he trying to open up the cluster and then try and get back to the behind the black? Because this is Maybe, risky. This is risky. Very dangerous. I think he got away from of it. Very attacking safety game. Well, that's the tactical play Habib was trying. He was trying to force Muhammad to open the pack for him. Now, the pressure is on. That's a good shot from Habib. Can't ask for anything more than this. I do, oh, that's okay. I feel that he can come back here. Yeah, just draw back. Clever. And the black to the rescue, acting as a force field to prevent that red from going in the middle. However, the red to the corner, the green pocket, but he hasn't gone for it. Would you go for the green pocket? No, I would go for the same shot Habib is going to. I would hit the red. Excellent what shot. was that? That's an excellent shot from Habib. What happened there? He just potted that from nowhere. It's an amazing we pot from Habib. We didn't even see that. Did you see that shot now? I thought he was going to hit the red into the brown and the red on the other end of the table just to, to leave the red on that end and bring the white behind the black. But that was a very aggressive shot from Habib. Difficult yellow. That was never easy. That was never easy. No. This is how I look at it. You're 14 points in front. Plenty of points on the table. So you can quite easily get the deficit. But those two reds and that brown, I feel that they are the key balls in this game. And that yellow. So if I can pop as many 
callous as possible and build that lead. That's going to put pressure on my opponent. But will he do it? Yeah, well, he has plenty of reds in the open to build up a very good lead. Only three reds are out of commission. So this black. So he's going to try and clear the blue as fast as he can. He still has the green. It's in a potable position. He can go to the green and then come back and free the blue or the pink. So this red. And I've noticed something in my hand, but it's Q action. He's done this before. He's completely slowed down. His presentation has slowed down. His accuracy and the way he's thinking. I got a feeling that there's a reason why. He knows how important this shot is. He knows, he knows that this is a big chance. Yeah. If he misses it, he would he would miss the chance to be crowned the champion of the world. It's a very good chance to force a decider. And then who knows what will happen in the decider. But this green to the red is a key ball. Oh, he's drawing back. That's an excellent shot. So he's going to have to clear that. Sorry. He's going to have to clear that blue and red at some point. When do you do that? Is it now? Try and take the red and the blue. I don't see an angle going into the blue now. Okay. I think he'll take the green one more time. Or maybe the pink. Oh, that's perfect. to go more. So this red to the green. Do you know how difficult that was? It was. It was bridging over the blue and the red. He's building a good lead now. Only 11 points in it. All that work for 11 points. Incredible. Charm, collective, perfect. He needs to be careful. These shots are incredibly difficult. <coughs>
Yeah, he wasn't pleased with that last kiss. <coughs> points ahead containing safety available but wait a minute does that cut into the middle no that's a great safety shot from Habib from Muhammad what a shot the sh oh you can just see it but what a great shot that was how difficult. Well, he didn't judge the pace properly. He wanted it behind the black. But nevertheless, it's a very good shot. He didn't leave anything for Habib, anything easy. So, you're 18 points in front, plenty of points on the table. Do you try and leave the brown where it is and the yellow? You don't want to move any of that. Well, I think Shahab is going to try and bring in the brown into play now. But he would definitely leave the yellow where it is. It's a safety ball. That's an excellent shot from Mohammed. Yeah. No easy return to the black area. But that red is sneaked out as it stopped in time. But is that a plant? Is it makeable? We haven't got the camera <coughs> on. So it's telling me. Oh, how cool did that look close? Is it worth the risk? Well, I think it's very difficult. The gap in between the reds. Yeah. It's too big. The angle would take him down to the brown if he tries and makes it. We're like coming across and all of a sudden it's going into the pocket. So unbelievable. But this red is on. It's difficult. Very missable. Wow. What a shot. Unbelievable. <laughs> a great shot and a great chance to come back to the frame he's 17 points behind now of a cut but that seven points will hurt him because he needed that seven points <coughs> and as it you can see sorry it will hurt him the seven points will definitely hurt him and if that blank went if that black went on he would have been on that red I like that shot. He had he did try to pot it. 
But he knew if he missed, he was kissing that brown into play. So how do you keep going in this situation? You're coming up to nearly five hours of play in one match. How do you, is it the mental ability <coughs> you, you guys train at? Well, I tend... <coughs> Excuse me. That's okay. I tend to think one ball at a time whenever I feel myself fatigued. So I don't think three, four shots ahead. I only think one or two shots ahead. That's to maintain my energy and be able to play more hours. This is how I would do it. And I think, I think that those players are doing the same. Incredible. Did he get the cover from the green? Well, we we're coming up to a 12 hour shift here in the commentary booth. We've been here since nine o'clock and we're not leaving until this match is over because I'm a great believer in giving you guys live action around the world. Great performance from everybody. It's been a very emotional day for us all. The women's semi final, the final of the World Championships Lady Division, and now the final of the World Masters. So I'd like to say thank you very much to all the crew who's put in incredible effort all day. So well done TV crew. And congratulations to Abdullah, head of media as well, because it's uh, very important to remember the teamwork which has been put into the live stream. But in the meantime, the safety now behind the brown is starting to secure the frame. This is a very clever shot by Muhammad. He's trying to eliminate the one cushion escape and make it more difficult for Habib. So close. We can ask for a better match to look at here for the world final. It's been a very entertaining match. Not yeah. over by any means. But like I said, if we go to a decider, it's going to be emotional. Yeah, I think it's a very interesting match. The only thing that was missing in this match is big breaks. But as for the tactical side of it, I think it was a very tactical match and the momentum of both the players, how they shared the momentum. Mohammed went in first, he established a two frames lead, and then Habib built up his momentum, came back from 3-1 down to 4-3. Wow. 
Unbelievable, and then he went in. Excellent shot. Because if that went in, cue ball four points, and look where it is. And what we're trying to do is give you a point of view from a pool player's point of view, myself, and a snooker player's point of view. Snooker player from Oman, who I've known for many years. And this is our first time together in the commentary booth. Many people around the world might have heard my voice in the pool world. And to step into the realm of the snooker world, I won't be doing it very often. Because you need, what a great shot, you need professional help. Because it's not easy doing the commentary on the snooker. And I'm not a professional commentator at all on the snooker but when it comes to pool <coughs> not a problem but in the meantime how are you seeing this game it's very tactical uh, pool i think uh, it, it will get even more tactical with this last straight on the table wow here we go the ac has been turned on Therefore, the temperature would drop. The temperature would drop and the whole game would change. Yeah, the AC will certainly affect the table and the cue ball, how, the, how it will run, and of course, even the cushion reaction will change. But I think the heat from both the players will still be going on. What a shot that was. And look at the, the <laughs> look at the score. 43 plays 21, 35 on the table. And the difference is 22. So there's plenty of points. But he has to hit this red. He needs to be careful if he misses it. He doesn't need <gasps> a free ball. He hit the blue first. So how do you rearrange all those balls? No. I... This is incredible. How he's going to rearrange all the balls. Well, now the difference is 27. Mohammed only needs this red. And Habib will, will need snookers. If they need a replay, well, I think well, Muhammad, Muhammad, Muhammad indicated that he needs a replay or needs a VAR, as they call it in the football world. Oh, they could be coming into the studio. This is interesting. This will be the first one. So. This could be, we're here, the head ref is coming around to come and see us. To, wow, I'm all excited. We could be making a bit of history here, but I don't know until it happens. We might be seeing a replay. Oh, we're trying to replay. <laughs> we're going to get, uh, yeah. Oh, there it is. So we're going to take a screenshot to help out. No, it's not there, guys. Oh. So we got a screenshot. Just trying to get the screenshot for you guys. And we got a screenshot. Um, do you know what? It looks pretty good to me. Wow! It looks pretty good to yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah, we got the screenshot. The red needs to go yeah. to the right, though. Isn't that perfect? Uh, 
Somebody took a photo of it before. Yeah, they did. We just sent it to them. Just beamed it across. To be fair, the referee is a superstar. Yeah, the referee did a great job. Absolute superstar. Job. Unbelievable. People don't understand this game, and I tell you what, this, this is incredible scenes. Head ref is there, they all happy. It, that's fantastic. Well done, guys. Oh, wait a minute. The green's got to go over. The green's got to go over the white. No, the white's got to come back. Yeah, the white's got to come back. But no. No. Yeah. Should we go out there? No, I won't. I won't. Because, uh, but to be fair, no, 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 no. It's got to go left. Left. To the left. That's not the right angle. See the white? Yeah, the cue ball needs to go to the left a little yeah, bit. Yeah, the cue ball's got to move at least a foot. It's a full it's a full ball cover. Yeah. But I think the referee yeah. did a good job in there. Every credit to the referee. He's been very patient, very professional, and very accommodative of the requests from the player. Yeah. Okay. But that's the way it is. And always remember, it's down to the referee and the players' discretion. They had in all red life. In all fairness, the players have been of a great help, not to contain the situation and not to make it bigger. Absolutely. And that's what I love about the sport. They've all agreed to play that. Now, the effect of that shot, 48 plays 21. 27 points in it, 35 on the table. So it's going to... I still have a feeling that this frame has another twist. Just imagine if it goes to 4-4. Four, four. It's going to be drama. With these two lads, I can assure you, the excitement is not going to end. if there's any hissing sound it's out of our control that was a great sh safety shot there because the AC's turned on and we will be sitting in the have you got a jacket? because we'll be frozen very shortly and I've already started shivering <laughs> I enjoy my time with people in the commentary booth. Believe me, it's, uh, it's very entertaining. Coming up to over 200 hours since the fourth 
Oh, he's left it. He's willing that red to go in. The willpower. <coughs> Unfortunately, could the AC have played a part? Could it have stopped that white uh, red going in? We we'll never know. But right now, this red to clinch the game. And we will be on a thriller. And there it is. Yeah, that was frame ball for Mohammed. Oh, he needs a color. The blue's the key. I don't think these players will be able to stand if it goes to four each. These players have been playing since 10 o'clock this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, unbelievable. Where's the yellow? 27 on the table. Snook two snookers required. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> I love being helped in the snooker world. Well, the brown is perfectly situated for a snooker. He came short on the green. I bet he wanted to put the green, go behind the ground, and then glue the cue ball to the pink. Yeah, remember when we said the AC is going to play a part? The whole cue ball has completely stopped, and that indicates that the players are struggling with the cue ball. Because earlier on, that would have gone in behind the brown. What happened there? And the table's slowing down. Cool. How did that go in? Uh, now here is a chance. Mohammed could find himself glued behind the pink after this shot. Nicely done. Now, how do you get out of this? But two snookers are required. He has to hit it. Beautiful. hit that both players are judging the table now because the table conditions have changed I don't know why the AC went on in such a critical time but it's taking a major effect on both players 
they're going to have to quickly adjust. Yeah, see how it's just popped out there from the black. Yeah, it's starting to get cold here. history for both players. Well, Habib might think of putting the brown if he gets a chance because it will mean that he needs only one snooker to tie. are struggling they must adapt very quick and there it is so the safety now we've got to find the sneakers 18 on the table. What happened there? Was he going to try and take the blue and then stick her on the pink? Yeah, because that meant that he only needed one snooker to win. Now he needs one snooker to tie. Is he trying to get the black safe? Yes, he was yeah. trying to glue the black into the cushion. Mohammed knows how Habib is good in getting snookers. Both players have tremendous respect to each other, and that's really great to see. Great attempt. Has he made it? I don't think he has. We're looking at a camera really? angle. Spotted. Yeah. My co pilot pointed that out. So there's blue. the game. He's gone for the double by the way. He's completely missed that. <coughs> well Habib will do everything he can to get a snooker and win at this frame because he knows how dangerous Muhammad can be. Yeah definitely in behind there. He's trying to get so tight to that black.
So where are you after, off after this tournament, by the way? Where are you off to? Uh, I'm heading back to Muscat. Spend some quality time with my family before starting the job again. As for me, I'm off to China for the grand final of the Hyper Bowl. Chinese 8 ball. So I'm flying off to China. Back to the pool world for the commentary. The home. And then I'm off to the Motis as well. You had, a, you had a fairly long break from pool. Yeah, yeah. 20 days. So just uh, doing a lot of traveling. I haven't been to China. Just come back from America. I was in Russia. Just out the border side of Russia playing a little bit of Russian billiards. <coughs> so I got a lot of travelling to do. So I won't be doing snooker until next year. A lot's happening next year. But where's the snooker? Yeah, Mohammed has been getting some half chances to put in the blue, but he's been missing them. What a shot! What a shot! Now that's interesting. That black would capture that white. Why is he taking the blue and going behind the pink? Yeah, have you yes. been trying to snooker him behind the black now? Which means it's only one snooker to win now. This is the opportunity, but he needs super glue. The super glue that cue ball to the black. Has he done it? Has he done it? No, he hasn't. That's not good enough. Be careful of the foul. What a shot. <laughs> now, how do you find the cue ball behind the black on this one? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. How did that go in? Has he got it this time? Close. It's very exciting till the end. That's okay. a clever shot. Although Habib needs only one snooker, but you have a feeling that he can do it. And Mohammed can put can put the pink. Clever shot. <coughs> Going for the double. I like this shot. I think I've just seen it. Just got to sneak a little bit of it and go him behind the black. But he's got to catch it thin. He's caught it too thick. A little bit thinner and it would have been perfect. So this pink 
for us to go hill hill what a shot incredible incredible there's not a break and see because of because of all the finger marks on the cloth Shihab has asked the referee if he can brush the table to get rid of all the finger marks. Definitely. And we're going to stay with you guys. And everybody's... Yeah, you do. Okay. Well, we're going to go to a commercial break. Join us right after the break. Let's go and get a cup of tea. Can we order some popcorn? Precision meets strategy, and every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. Get ready for a snooker spectacle. The World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill, and strategy. World Championships, Qatar 2023, where champions are made and legends are born. Welcome back to Qatar! In a world where precision meets strategy, and every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. Get ready for a snooker spectacle. The World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill, and strategy. World Championships, Qatar 2023 where champions are made and legends are born. Welcome back to Qatar! In a world where precision meets strategy, and every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. Get ready for a snooker spectacle. The World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill, and strategy. World Championships, Qatar 2023, where champions are made and legends are born. Welcome back to Qatar! In a world where precision meets strategy, and every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. Get ready for a snooker spectacle. The World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill, and strategy. World Championships, Qatar 2023, where champions are made and legends are born. Welcome back to Qatar! In a world where precision meets strategy, and every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. Get ready for a snooker spectacle. The World Championships 2023. 
world top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill and strategy. World Championships, Qatar 2023, where champions are made and legends are born. Welcome back to Qatar! In a world where precision meets strategy, and every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. Get ready for a snooker spectacle. The World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill and strategy. World Championships, Qatar 2023, where champions are made and legends are born. Welcome back to Qatar! In a world where precision meets strategy, and every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. Get ready for a snooker spectacle. The World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill and strategy. World Championships, Qatar 2023, where champions are made and legends are born. Welcome back to Qatar! In a world where precision meets strategy, and every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. Get ready for a snooker spectacle. The World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill and strategy. World Championships, Qatar 2023, where champions are made and legends are born. Welcome back to Qatar! In a world where precision meets strategy, and every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. Get ready for a snooker spectacle. The World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill and strategy. Oh, Shane. Oh, that's, that's my friend's name. The same friend. He went to Ladies and gentlemen, to the fans and the tenants and to the fans around the world. Unbelievable scenes. Incredible comebacks. You've just witnessed, if you've just joined us, and if, if you don't know the outcome so far, we're at four apiece. It gives me great honor to introduce my good friend, 
Hossein from Old Man. Come on in. What's going on? Tell us how you see it. Well, uh, thank you very much, Paul. Um, and it was very nice to see that both the players were wishing the best to each other in the deciding frame in the final match of the Masters World Championship. It's been a very close game. Okay. Both shared four frames. And it's all now down to this frame. I suspect it's going to be a very tactical frame, tight frame. I don't think we will witness any big breaks, but it's going to be an exciting and enjoyable frame, I'm sure. <coughs> Come on. I'm going to ask something very special. I'll wait till we get a clear view. I'm going to ask the camera director to show you what they are playing for. Ready? There it is. The championship of the world. Oh, we'll come back to the trophy because the players are just around the trophy. I want you guys to understand this is the problem in pool tournaments. I've won many tournaments around the Middle East and you see that trophy. We can have a look at it. Are you ready? We'll try now. There it is. To be crowned champion of the world, you just got one hand on it each. Beautiful, isn't it? That's what they're playing for. Enjoy the final frame here in Qatar, the host nation for the IBSF Championship of the World. Another great shot. Perfect. Yeah, he's put Shahab on a difficult position now. There's no clear pathway back to the bulk. I think it's going to be either a containing safety or just stick to the bunch. <coughs> Just had a text from my wife telling me that, uh, where are you? I left her at eight o'clock this morning. She's worrying where I am, but uh, I said I'm in the snooker hall for the world final. She says, it's still going on. I said, yes. She doesn't realize how long these games go on for. Coming up to a staggering 13 hours and there it is the trophy to be crowned champion of the world that's a nice shot it's an amazing shot all the reds are in the open he needs to be very careful to choose where he lands careful here as he left it oh, that's an excellent shot <coughs> beautiful look at that Great White is back. Presidents are here for the presentation straight after. I don't think I'll have time to interview the players. 
because we are way behind time. These players have been here since 10 o'clock and the time is 23, 11, 17, incredible. <coughs> but they've been playing. How do they do it? Here's a chance. He cleared the black. And the first chance is for Shahab in this deciding frame. Both the players are very careful, they don't want to leave a chance to their opponents. Everybody's hanging to this frame. So the tactical battle. Do I go for it or do you go for it? For me, I'm going all in at anything. Show him that I want the title to be crowned champion of the world. As I said, both players have tremendous amount of respect to each other and they know the capabilities of each other. One chance and they could finish the game. So everybody is going to play tactical. They will try to close as much as possible. <coughs> and I suspect it's going to be a very close frame. He went for it. He went for it. That's what I'm saying. Well, what a I, great I, pot from Habib. He's not perfect on the black but it's still potable. And that's what I'm explaining. Show your opponent why you want to win and be crowned champion of the world. You got to break build. And it starts with the first red as we watch the black go in. This is it. This is the opportunity. But where's the red? Can you see the red? There is a red at the left of the cluster, the far left red. It's not easy. And he needs to get back into prime position if he wants to clinch the frame in one visit. It's a big shot. It's all on that shot. Has that title slipped away? We're gonna have to wait and see. He knows it was a tough shot. Now we've got the scoreboard. So, 
and there's one point in it. It's four apiece. Hold the blue, freeze for the red. The pressure is on. Wow. Is it because of the finish? The way I see in many sports, we happen, it happens in the pool world as well. When we see that finishing line, we know it's there, but we can't get over it. How do you deal with the finishing line? Yeah, I think you'll see a lot of missing and a lot of going out of position in this frame. And that's because both the players, they see the finishing line, they see the trophy next to them. Both of them would do anything to put their hands on that trophy. <coughs> so it'd be fair to say, both players, great shot. And that's, that's incredible. Oh, this is danger. This has got to hit. How did he play that? It's a yeah, major shot. He lost a lot. Of, he used a lot of sight to come out of that cushion and get the spin desired in the cue ball. And hit the red thin to go back to the bulk. The problem with this shot is that you never know where the object ball or the red would go. And as we can see in this instant, the red is fairly close to the pocket. Now this red, got to go for it. It has to go in and it's all on this red. Who will be crowned champion of the world? Yes, it is early, but you got to get that red. It's all on this red. He's done it. Hold for the pink. Yeah, that was an excellent shot. Really tremendous. You need nerves of steel as we watch this pink into the middle. There it is. Did they brush the table? Yes, I saw the guy, uh, I saw the referee brushing the table. Uh, before the start of the deciding frame and I also um, saw some of the guys asking them to lower the AC because it's really freezing there in the arena and there's a reason why I said that <coughs> when he potted the pink with the angle I saw there was no deviation it went straight in the middle of the pocket so there's, where's that red gone? Where's that red gone? Yeah, it's there, it's the cut into the wet corner. Mohammed will be devastated to see that. Perfect. So would it be fair to say they both get in chances? Yeah, they both did get a chance. Uh, and you can see from the scoreboard, it's only 12 points the difference. Both of them didn't take good advantage of their chances. I think Mohammed is going to find himself in trouble when he comes back to the table after this shot. I don't think Habib is going to play anything risky. They will both take whatever is there in front of them and try to put their opponent in trouble.
thank you very much for joining me today. It's been You're an honour. You're most honor. welcome. It's been an honour for me too. I know I'm different, but uh, I'm glad I get on with people. <laughs> well, anyway, let's get back to the game. Now, that's a great safety shot. But where's that red? Where's that? Oh, knocked on that door. And do you know what I like about us? We're straight down the line. There's no, I want Muhammad to win, Habibi to win. We're straight down the line. And that's what commentary is all about. Oh, dear of him. He's gone in the zone. He's gone in that zone. I've seen the pool players do it. He's digging deep. But wait a minute. We'll definitely see a lot of frustration now. Now that both the players see the finishing line and they see the trophy hanged in front of them, the amount of frustration is going to be more. But here's a chance, half a chance. If he gets into prime position after this spot, maybe he can establish a very good lead. Is it that because the trophy's just beside them and the title? Even without the trophy being there, they know this is a deciding frame for the World Championship. And they both worked so hard to reach to this level and to this match. They faced very strong opponents on their path and they made it to the final. And it's a deciding frame of this final, and everybody wants to be rewarded for their hard work. And I'm back tomorrow on the 10 o'clock session. And uh, I don't know how many hours of sleep I'm going to get tonight. <laughs> but I've loved every minute of this action today, because we don't want you missing anything here today. Well, yeah, this, this match was nothing but um, excitement. Definitely. It's, it's an impressive match, very nice match. Both the players did everything they could. Nobody, of course, would love to lose the final. They gave it everything they have. This is missable. I've seen players miss this shot so many times. And he's hit the jaw of the pocket. And the red is waiting. So many players, I hear it like a, a ding in Habibi's cue. A sound reaction. Yeah, I think he banged his cue there when he missed just completely that safety shot and he hit the knuckle of the and the jaw of the middle pocket. So the containing safety. All the colours are tied up. There is no pot in here. Mohammed will have to play a very good safety shot and put Habib into trouble when he comes back to the table. And um, what a great safety shot that is. Where is the escape? I think there's a path in between the blue and the brown to hit the red on the right of the black. If the path is there, then that's a poor shot from Mohammed. He should have completely closed the right side of the punch. Great shot. How can you get the white back to where it was? <laughs> what a shot that is. It was good, and if you can see, he completely 
blocked the right side of the pack by the blue and the green is blocking the other end so this is a tough shot maybe the safest way is to go through the side cushion and nestle to the bunch of reds that's available in the middle of the table I think well we just moments now that's an indication where he's going to come from his cue so he's going to come in behind the black and back up to the ball colour as we watch the cue indicate the line to do that shot yeah now the reason why he's hesitating is because of the green gonna block the white getting better at this if he, if he plays the shot that he's indicating that means that he would have to hit the red so thick to avoid any contact with the green yeah. and go back up to the ball but that would open up all the reds and you never know where the reds will end up So, the first safety shot to roll in, I've seen on the TV table, or should I say table one, sorry, in the whole tournament, where they've rolled the whole length into the cluster. First one I've seen, I haven't seen that. That's how important that shot was, you're right. If you hit that too hard, going in behind the yellow? Possibly, yeah. Too risky. Too much base on it. But that's still a good shot. I'm looking at our camera too. See that plant? Gotta be careful. It's going straight in the pocket. Got to be careful. How can you get this safe? It doesn't. Well, oh, rolling up behind. He needs, he needs to be very careful if he goes if he goes behind the bunch. There's a red that's portable to the right corner. He might leave it. Oh, that's a great what shot. What a shot! That's a very good shot. I told you if it goes to four each, we're in for a thriller. He doesn't want to give away the angle to get back to the balk line. And that was clever. He's just nudged that green away from going into the corner pocket. Yeah, that is clever. Put um, snooker there. Half of the IBSF, we say thank you so much to Cata TV, BN Sports, Elcast, and Cata YouTube for their support throughout the tournament. It's always important to remember support is everything in any sport, and we have it here. And over a hundred team members getting this tournament up and running. And the referees are just amazing what they've been through in this tournament from the fourth to where we are. Constant refing, as well as the media team as well. And the camera crew are phenomenal. They really are. We, we've just sat here since nine o'clock, up and running and the time's ticking away because we do it for the passion and we thoroughly enjoy our snooker as we watch now the safety shot to roll him behind the red he's gone for the angle 
That's a very good shot. Well, he managed to find a path back to the bulk, but he didn't stick the cue ball to the cushion. And he moved that green earlier on. He knew it was close, and that's a great shot. However, does that green, that red go past the green? We haven't got a camera angle. Not too sure. Yes, it does. Presentation tells me he's going for it. This green, I'm oh, sorry, this red. He's missed it. Coming up to a 12 hour shift today. 13. You know, the hours just tick away. It's like we're in a zone, time zone. Well, the matches today have been very exciting, and that's why you don't feel that the hours have been passing. Exactly. I don't even know what, what time it is. <coughs> Came in at 9. 13 hour shift. Well, we have been rewarded with a nice deciding frame. It hasn't been nice in regards to rotting and break building, but the tactical battle in between those two oh. is really great. Where's the white? <coughs> it's left the table. So we are starting to feel really cold here, so it's affecting the table. Oh, that's a great shot if it goes behind the yellow. And the players are feeling the cold as well, I can assure you, and the table is reacting different. But we will be here until the conclusion. Who is crowned champion of the World Masters of the IBSF? But right now, this safety is so difficult. Well, that's a great shot from Mohammed. He managed to find a path to the bulk without leaving much to Habib. He left a small chance. If he cuts that, he might be able to be on the blue or the brown, but he needs to be very careful. It's still a closed frame. Black is out of commission. Green is at the other end of the table. And there are plenty of points available to grasp. I'm shocked. 
because I felt that he could get that. And the only reason why he missed that, fatigue. He would have potted that no problem in the beginning. But because every shot now is nerves of steel. They're red to the yellow pocket is going to be a very important shot. He's just checking to see if he doesn't leave anything. So this red, yellow pocket, all in. He's done it. Fantastic shot. The good thing is that he played this shot knowing that, or in a way, that he is not going to leave anything but the red that he's playing. And knowing that the green is there for him to start a good break or a sizable break. He, he's looking for a sizable break. The black is now in the open. Pink is open to four pockets. And there are plenty of reds available to take. So this is a chance. And he's going to try everything to win the frame in one visit. The total run out, we call it in the pool world. Run the table to be crowned champion of the world. It's all down to you. And both players have put in a performance of their lives to be here. As we mentioned, 10 o'clock session, non-stop action to get here. So well done to both players. It's sad that there's got to be a loser. But I can assure you, they're not losers. They're both winners for their countries and they put on a performance of their lives. As we watch now, wait a minute, what's happened there? Well, that's not the best shot that he has played in this match. He misjudged the angle completely. He wanted to get past that red to put it in the same pocket as he put it the green, but he completely misjudged the angle. And now this red is portable to the right corner, but it's difficult. Difficult is turned into missable. Agree, it's highly missable. <laughs> Too risky. In behind the yellow. Possible. He was fortunate not to leave anything. But I think he's going to find himself in trouble next time he's on the table. But look at the score. Five points in it. It's a very close match. After this match, the presentation will start, so stay with us. Wow, oh, I thought that was in. But look at the termination of the power of that shot has turned into good fortune, favors the brave. And Mohammed knows, yeah. Good fortune happened there. Can you see a shot to come back? That's a bit difficult. 
I can't see anything, any, any path back to the bulk. How do you get that back? I think you might be forced to take that red, long red on. If he pops that, that would be the shot for the championships. Under tremendous pressure, the whole title rests on one red because they're more than capable of clearing and they're all in the open so how do you get it safe Two masters at the table. One mistake and the title's gone. Who's it going to be? He's certainly taking his time on the shot. He knows how critical it is. If he misses, he could be in trouble and he could lose the title. He's taking over two minutes of thinking now. And I don't blame him for that. Absolutely. Take as long as you want. Because the title depends on this red. Pot it, you're champion of the world. Miss it. Yeah. That's how you got to think. It's all on this red, because they're all in the open. capable of clearing once they get potting this is the longest shot well probably isn't after last night's performance two o'clock in the morning yeah we've seen some long shots in that match but this Three. is very important shot now has that gone? Has the title gone? Well, it's not an easy shot. Habib is faced with a tricky pot. And the crowd is built up, as we are witnessing. But this. He, can take, he can take the top red of those two as a shot to nothing. Oh, I didn't see that one. Got it. That's a great shot. And if he gets a good angle on the yellow, which he did, this looks promising. So this shallow. All the reds are in the open. All the colours are in the open. So this could be a perfect great chance. Perfect for the red. The blue's waiting, everything is waiting. But look at the scores. Just two points in it as we watch the red go to the middle. Hold for the black. And start to break build. He's taking them quite well. He's taking his time on the shot. He's measuring the pace and the power. He got almost all the colors back to their spots. This looks promising. And I'm sure all the family are watching home. These young men have been through a tremendous battle and I can honestly say it's one of the greatest battles I've seen. It's been emotional. He overhit this red. I think he's forced now to have 
to make a make a contact with the two reds above the black. There is no angle to straight straightly go into them, or maybe there is. It's been an incredible, incredible day, and there's a reason for that determination to be crowned champion of the world. But he hasn't done it. He hasn't flicked off that red to how he wants it. Is it another safety? Yeah, he was unlucky not to be on red um, after this shot. And I don't think he's going to risk taking this red into the, la into the corner pocket. He was five points behind when he came into the table. Now he's 12 in front. He will try and maintain his lead as much as possible. a great shot. I didn't see that red going to the middle. I didn't see it. I thought he was cutting the red into the corner. This is the problem. We, if you can imagine sitting in a cinema and you're in the front row, that's the problem we got. Now he's back in point position again. This is promising. It's just the angle is misdeceiving sometimes and we can't see it. What a fantastic shot. He needs red color and another red in the color. And he's over the line. He needs two reds and two colors to put Mohammed in a snooker requires stage. Beautiful. Smooth, accurate. All the ingredients. Black, be crowned champion. And a black to be crowned the champion of the world. That's my phrase. I like it. <laughs> He's three shots away. I thoroughly enjoyed doing the commentary with you. I did too, honestly. Yeah. It's my first ever experience in commentating. <laughs> it's best when you got two because you can bounce off each other. Of course. No. But right now, this is it. Pivotal moment. He's two pots away. Because we're so late, I don't think there'll be an interview because uh, the presentation's straight away. But right now, the champion of the world is one red away. Now you will hear the round of applause after this black, which will tell him that there he's over is. the line. It's not going to be safe yet. It's only one snooker required if he puts this black. But that means he can have a bit of a relief. Half of the IBSF Caterpillar Sneaker Federation, Outcast TV, BN Sports TV. We say thank you to you guys for all the support. It's been an emotional time, but it's fair to say. Now, this red to guarantee that Shihab is not coming back to the table. 
If he misses it, she half will come. It's only one snooker required. 35 on the table, 38 is the difference. But if he puts this black, I will go 39 above with only 27 on the table. So this red, to make absolutely sure that he's crowned the champion of the world. Missed it, but wait a minute. So, I was very fortunate to knock the black into the cushion into a safe position. 35 on the table, 38 is different. So, so one snooker, snooker required. is required, yeah. I know one thing. Mohammed will dig in deep, and he's oh, it's a fraction out. It's been a very emotional game, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's been a very, very exciting game. I really wish we could crown both of them, but unfortunately, we can only crown one. And the other one can have to be, has to be the runner-up. Both of them played marvelous during the tournament. They gave it everything, and they certainly gave everything in the final, making us enjoy every moment of it. What a shot! What a shot that was! Under tremendous pressure, unbelievable. Yeah, knowing that if he missed, he would maybe leave him with a free ball and he could get right back into the game. But that was an amazing shot. Yeah, the bounce, he's tried to bounce that. He bought it behind the brown. It didn't happen. The willpower. I have seen players use their hands to wave it on and stop it. But I haven't seen the bounce. But right now, this red is crucial. Not really sure if he can get into the putting angle from that position. But hitting the red is no problem. Uh, he's swerving around the brown. I think he can't see enough of the red. Has to be careful. <sighs> I thought he missed it. It started to swerve so much. Well, you saw he chucked before he swerved. He's not taking anything for granted. Why, well, it's 12 o'clock. They've been battling since 10 o'clock this morning. Incredible. Has he made it? Has he made the safety? There could be a small gap in between blue and green. Fortune. Did he get the snooker? Yeah. There's still he's not giving in. Mohammed is not giving in. Well, have you got it into the right corner, into the green pocket? It's definitely on. If it's there, 
He is the champion. If not, then the cue ball is coming back to a safe place. decided to go for a safety shot and he got the snooker he has to get out of it or the title has slipped away dear Mohammed he's put in a performance of his life I don't think he's ever been in this position from 10 o'clock to where he is now he has to hit this red. Did he leave it? Did he leave it? Oh. That's difficult. I think Habib will make an attempt. So this red. For the championship of the world we're a great team <laughs> I'm so happy to have known you for many years and uh, it's great knocked on the door Trying to hold for the pink. This, this didn't go well. This could cost him. This could cost him. If he puts the pink, then it's one snooker to tie. The green and brown are situated properly for a snooker, but he needs to get that pink. He's missed it. He's missed it. Yeah, well. Your winner, Habibi, champion of the world. Thank you very much, my dear friend. Thank you very much, Pepsi. It has been an honor. I really enjoyed every bit of this match. I, I, I look at it like this. When I'm with somebody, it's fantastic. And it was an honor to be with you and knowledge of the game. Thank you very much. Take care. You Good, too. Goodbye, everybody. Welcome back to Qatar. In a world where precision meets strategy and every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. Get ready for a snooker spectacle. The World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill and strategy. World Championships, Qatar 2023, where champions are made and legends are born. Welcome back to Qatar! In a world where precision meets strategy, and every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. Get ready for a snooker spectacle. The World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill and strategy. World Championships, Qatar 2023, where champions are made and legends are born. Welcome back to Qatar! In a world 
where precision meets strategy. And every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. Get ready for a snooker spectacle. The World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill and strategy. World Championships Qatar 2023, where champions are made and legends are born. Welcome back to Qatar! In a world where precision meets strategy, and every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. Get ready for a snooker spectacle. The World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill and strategy. World Championships Qatar 2023, where champions are made and legends are born. Welcome back to Qatar! In a world where precision meets strategy, and every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. Get ready for a snooker spectacle. The World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill and strategy. World Championships Qatar 2023, where champions are made and legends are born. Welcome back to Qatar! In a world where precision meets strategy, and every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. Get ready for a snooker spectacle. The World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill and strategy. World Championships Qatar 2023 where champions are made and legends are born. Welcome back to Qatar! In a world where precision meets strategy and every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. Get ready for a snooker spectacle. The World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill and strategy. World Championships Qatar 2023 where champions are made and legends are born. Welcome back to Qatar! In a world where precision meets strategy and every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. Get ready for a snooker spectacle. The World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill and strategy. 
World Championships, Qatar 2023, where champions are made and legends are born. Precision meets strategy, and every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. Get ready for a snooker spectacle. The World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill, and strategy. World Championships, Qatar 2023, where champions are made and legends are born. Welcome back to Qatar! In a world where precision meets strategy, and every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. Get ready for a snooker spectacle. The World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill, and strategy. World Championships, Qatar 2023 where champions are made and legends are born. Welcome back to Qatar! In a world where precision meets strategy, and every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. Get ready for a snooker spectacle. The World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill, and strategy. World Championships, Qatar 2023, where champions are made and legends are born. Welcome back to Qatar! In a world where precision meets strategy, and every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. Get ready for a snooker spectacle. The World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill, and strategy. World Championships, Qatar 2023, where champions are made and legends are born. Welcome back to Qatar! In a world where precision meets strategy, and every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. Get ready for a snooker spectacle. The World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill, and strategy. World Championships, Qatar 2023, where champions are made and legends are born. Welcome back to Qatar! In a world where precision meets strategy, and every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. 
Get ready for a snooker spectacle. The World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill and strategy. World Championships Qatar 2023, where champions are made and legends are born. Precision meets strategy, and every shot is a masterpiece painted on the bay's canvas. Get ready for a snooker spectacle. The World Championships 2023. World top snooker champions will converge, aiming for the coveted title. It's a battle of nerves, skill, and strategy. World Championships Qatar 2023, where champions are made and legends are born.
Ba't ka ba? Wag mo yung galaw-galaw. 